Hello and welcome. This is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. This channel evaluates all aspects of true crime. As you are aware, videos and live streams in this genre often discuss elements of crime that may be disturbing to some viewers. If necessary, take the precautions needed to avoid these feelings. Factual information related to cases is the key to fostering rational true crime discussions. Fortunately, you will find that here. Please hit the like button only once, share the video, and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for watching. going on freaks man what a massive crowd we've got in here tonight unbelievable wow huge thank you all so this is the test here uh, we'll see how we do on the uh, first day of this trial and uh, see if we are going to continue to keep doing it all right so we'll definitely see but uh, this is a This is a case that uh, we covered from the very beginning. Jennifer Dulos. I see her. Let's see. Let me get a different screen here. Right there. And let me fix that. That was from like combined for two days right there. That's not today's show. So that was five. Okay, let me put that in there. Oh, I don't know if my... Uh, Bots were going to be working either. Hold on, I have to fix something. Now they might. Now. What's today? 01, 14, 24. All right, there you go. Hey, thanks, Jim Long. Okay, so uh, Jennifer Dulo's case, if we go back, is the Uh, let's see. So, there's a guy named Photos Dulos that was married to Jennifer Dulos that you see on the screen right here. And his girlfriend was one Michelle Traconis. Right? So, that's uh, Michelle Traconis. And that's who the trial's about. You're looking at Jennifer Dulos. And on Friday, May 24, 2019, she dropped her children off at school at around 8 a.m. She missed an 11 a.m. appointment. 12 p.m. the housekeeper arrived. She also missed a 1 p.m. appointment. She was reported missing at 7 p.m. the same day by two friends. Neither her cell phone nor her credit cards have been used. And then on the 25th, state police detectives went to her Wells Avenue home and found traces of blood, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that's what this um, trial is about is uh, so Photos Dulos took his own life, uh, you know, when all the cards, you know, he could see that he was just toast. So he took his own life, but his girlfriend, Michelle Draconis, didn't do that. So she is, you know, she was driving out and about with him. It seems like she was very aware of what was going on. And this trial is, you know, there's multiple charges, but the main one is conspiracy to commit murder. Like Jennifer... Dulos is deemed dead at this point, and she is. It's really obvious. Um, so, there you go. There you have it. 
and that's what this trial is about here. This is the judge. Uh, I tried to fix the audio. It was really low on their stream. You can barely hear it. So this is Law and Crime. Thank you very much for allowing me to play this a day after. And also, um, yeah, so I removed, I got it down to 3 hours and 27 minutes and out of 7 hours and 50 or something. All right. So there's also some part with a videotape inside the house. I can speed it through that if we need to. All right, but I'm going to rely on you freaks to help support the channel during the stream. Uh, and that will determine whether or not we continue to keep doing the, the Dulos trial. Because we, you know, if I, I, I can't just sort of do this whole trial and have it just be like, you know, nowhere near like a normal stream. And you can see right now there's only 77 people watching which is absolutely pathetic for a channel that has 116,000 subscribers and you can't even, there's not even 100 people, all right? So <laughs> I guess we'll see how it goes. This might be a, the bellwether show right here. I know I'm a little earlier, but, you know, I really shouldn't make that big a difference. You guys ready? You guys know what the hellos and... What the court is going to do is talk to you about some of the instructions that shall... It's kind of weird audio because it kind of phases in and out. ...guide your deliberations. It will also include a reading of the information again, which you have already heard. The court must read it again. This is a criminal case. The state has brought charges against Michelle Tarconis. And the court will now read that information. Paul J. Forensic, State's Attorney for the Ju Judicial District of Stamford, Norwalk, charges count one conspiracy to commit murder. At various times <clears throat> and in various locations, including but not limited to the town of New Canaan on or about the 24th day of May 2019, in the area of 69 Wells Lane, Michelle Traconis, with intent that conduct constituting the crime of murder be performed, did agree with Fotis Dulos and other persons to engage in and cause the performance of that conduct. And one of them did commit an overt act in pursuance of the conspiracy. To wit, Fotis Dulos did assault Jennifer Farber Dulos in her home on the 24th day of May 2019 with the intent to restrain and kill her in violation of section 53A 48A and 53A 50. So, for the people out there that have watched the trial, it's really low. You can you can almost barely hear, even if you turn up your mic all the way. So, I down exported the audio first, and then I put it through a program where it kind of normalizes all the audio levels and then makes it hi higher. So even though it's a little weird sounding, I mean that's this is kind of this is what they sound like, and I sped it up eighty, uh, like fifteen percent, you know. So after I was done editing it, I got it down to four hours and then I sped it up so it's three hours and 27 minutes. Look at that. I see some of the, uh, the day freaks in here. All right. For a subsection A of the Connecticut General Statute, count two, conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence. And the aforesaid state's attorney further accuses the defendant, Michelle Cacona, of conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence and charges that on or about the 24th day of May 2019 in the city of Hartford in the area of Albany Avenue, the defendant Michelle Traconis, with the intent that conduct constituting the crime of tampering with physical evidence be performed, did agree with Otis Dulos to engage in and cause the performance of that conduct. And one of them did commit an overt act in pursuance of the conspiracy to wit the defendant, Michelle Traconis, traveled with Fotis Dulos to the Hartford area for the purpose of disposal of physical evidence relating to the murder of Jennifer Farber Dulos in the city of Hartford on the 24th day of May 2019 in violation of Section 53A-48 and 53A-155A1 of the Connecticut General Statute. Count three, tampering with physical evidence. And the aforesaid state's attorney further accuses the defendant, Michelle Traconis, of tampering with physical evidence and charges that on or about the 24th day of May 2019, within the city of Hartford, in the area of Albany Avenue, the defendant, Michelle Traconis, 
believing that a criminal investigation conducted by a law enforcement agency was pending and about to be instituted, and an official proceeding was pending and about to be instituted, did alter, destroy, conceal, and remove a thing with a purpose to impair its availability in that criminal investigation and official proceeding in violation of Section 53A-155A1 and 53A-8A of the Connecticut General Statute. Count four. See, what's going to be cool is later on when they start showing the surveillance footage, I'll show you guys on the map and exactly where the cameras are and everything. It's pretty sweet how they, I mean, they just have them nailed. Conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence. And the Afro State's Attorney further accuses the defendant, Michelle Faconis, of conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence. And charged that on or about the 29th day of May 2008. Hey, Kathleen, I think one of your comments was removed accidentally. And the 19 in the town of Avon. In the area of 265 West Main Street, the defendant, Michelle Taconis, with the intent that conduct constituting the crime of tampering with physical evidence be performed, of the prosecution in the second degree. I thought it like further. And the aforesaid state's attorney further one. accuses the defendant, Michelle Traconis, of hindering prosecution in the second degree and charges that on. Wait, come on. That's, that's bull crap, Zozo. A piece of bacon slime. <laughs> Listen to that. Here's, okay, Zozo, dele <laughs> Zozo deleted Kathleen Kanick's comment. She said, Kathleen Kanick, I'm so sorry. I deleted your comment. I'm cooking and a piece of bacon slapped my phone. There's no chance. That's ridiculous. On or about the 29th day of May 2019 <laughs> in the town of Avon, in the area of 265 West Main Street, the defendant, Michelle Traconis, did render criminal assistance to another person when, with intent to prevent, hinder, and delay the discovery and apprehension of, and the lodging of a criminal charge against Fotis Dulos, uh, Dulos rather, whom she knew and believed had committed a Class A felony to wit murder, did provide Fotis Dulos with transportation and other means of avoiding discovery and apprehension in support of Fotis Dulos's effort to conceal, alter, and destroy evidence of the murder contained within a 2001 Toyota Tacoma in violation of sections 53A-165A3 and 53A-166 of the Connecticut General Statute. Now, as mentioned before, the information that the court has just read is not evidence. It is only the formal means of bringing charges, and you may not consider the information as evidence. You may not draw any inference of guilt because the defendant has been arrested and charged. Each charge is set forth in the information as what is called a separate count. Did you hear that, Gray? That's what you did with Koberger, just because he was arrested and charged. In deciding the case, you must consider each charge separately. Every defendant in a criminal case is presumed innocent, and as we explained to you earlier, the presumption of innocence works this way. If you were asked right now whether Michelle Traconis was guilty or innocent, the answer is not, I don't know. The answer is not guilty because you have heard nothing to overcome the presumption of innocence. That presumption remains unless you unanimously decide that the state has proven guilt beyond a reasonable, a reasonable doubt for each of the offenses. The burden is on the state to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. And that is called the burden of proof. The burden of proof never shifts to the defendant. If you do not find at the conclusion of all of the evidence that the state has proved beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant has committed every element of an offense, you must find the defendant not guilty of that offense. On the other hand, if you are satisfied that the evidence establishes guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, you should not hesitate to find the defendant guilty. The procedure for the trial is as follows. After these instructions, the state will present its evidence. Of course, the defendant has the right to cross-examine. The defendant may, if he chooses, present evidence. As you recall, the defendant is presumed innocent. The defendant does not have to prove innocence. If the defendant chooses to present evidence, the state may have the opportunity to present what is called rebuttal evidence. After all of the evidence has been presented, the lawyers will make their closing arguments. The closing arguments themselves are not evidence. You may consider the arguments in your deliberations, but those arguments do not constitute evidence. The state will argue first, this is 
in regard to the closing argument according to our rules and then the defendant will argue the state has the opportunity to argue after the defense the defense will not have a second opportunity to argue however each side received the same amount of time for argument the state may break its argument however into two parts if it chooses <laughs> when the arguments have been completed the court will instruct you on the law which applies in this case you must apply the law as the court instructs after the instructions, you will be sent to the jury room to begin your deliberation. This is the first time you will discuss the case. Okay, so are you guys, we're, we're all pretty familiar with all this rigmarole, right? So how about we just move it to where the first witness comes up, right? There's no opening statements or anything. So what if, what if we just do that? Where are we going here? And then there she is right there, Michelle Traconis. All right, here we go. Right there. Please state your name and spell it for the record. Uh, Lieutenant Aaron Latourette. Spelled A-A-R-O-N. Latourette. L-A-T-O-U-R. Hey, by the way, is anybody else sick of Windows um, 11, I guess? <laughs> where, where these little things pop up all the time and like, hey, we're helping you. We're helping you. E-T-T. -E. And your affiliation? I'm a Lieutenant at the McKenna Police Department. Thank you. Maybe you should have thanked Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Lieutenant Latrette, how are you? I'm, I'm good. Hi. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, can you please uh, I introduce you to Sergeant, sir? Can you tell your rank? How long have you been a lieutenant? And a little bit about yourself, please. Yes. Uh, I'm a lieutenant at the New Canaan Police Department. I've been employed there for 23 years, two months. Um, during my time at the police department, uh, I've had several schools or training in regards to motor vehicle law, criminal law, um, leadership, supervision, investigations. Um, I've had several collateral duties while at the police department. Those collateral duties included uh, dispatcher, firearms instructor, motorcycle patrol, special response team. I'm currently the team leader for the special response team. Um, throughout my career at the New Canaan Police Department, I have been uh, assigned to the patrol division. In 2015, I was promoted to the rank of sergeant. And this past year, in 2023, I was promoted to the rank of uh, lieutenant. Are you in a particular division or department of the New Canaan Police Department? The patrol division, yes. So how about the speed here? Is that good? It could almost be a little bit quicker, but I think it sounds pretty normal and... You know, it almost sounds like this. When you're talking really fast, you can talk, you know, not quite. Previous like that. to that, you indicated you were a sergeant? I was, yes. Were you in, or assigned, I should say, to a particular division or department as a sergeant? A uh, 311 shift, yes. Uh, what is that? Uh, okay. The New Canada Police Department has three different shifts. It's day shift, we work eight hours. Our day shift, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. <laughs> Evening shift, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. And the night shift, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Like I was a sergeant. Like the day crew. Shift. Attorney Manning, if you could just instruct the witness that there is an interpreter. Really difficult to keep up with certain paces. So, uh, if we, we can, just can talk a little bit more slowly. Oh man! Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And thank God that I sped it up then, because I think that's why I was like, "Man, this is slow." Sir, uh, now you are as a. Well, actually, let me bring that back. Uh, were you working as a sergeant then in 2019? I was. Yes. Is a position as a sergeant? Are you in uniform? On the patrol division, yes. I was on shift. I was in uniform. Okay. With respect to uh, May, well, May 24th, 2019, uh, drawing your attention to that day in particular, what shift were you working? The evening shift, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. And again, in uniform? In uniform, yes. Does that uni uniform also include a body cam? It does. Uh, however, that day in question, uh, body cameras are still new, fairly new to the New Canaan Police Department. Um, we had a limited number of cameras that were shared amongst all the patrol officers on the, on the patrol division. Um, one was not available for me to wear that day, that shift. Uh, either it was either charging a battery or downloading the information that was on the camera. Um, so that particular day, I was not wearing a body cam. Did you work with any other officers that day? Yes. Any other officers that had a body cam on? Yes. Uh, also, Matt Blank, he was uh, working through a lot of shift with me. He was wearing a body cam. Now, did you have occasion to respond to 69 Wells in New Keen, Wells Lane, I should say, in New Keene in that night? Yes. Why did you respond there? Uh, the police department had a report, a uh, complaint of a missing person at that address. Who was that missing person? Uh, Jennifer Dulos. Where were you when you heard the report of the missing person? Uh, I was in the police department. Um, I walked up to the dispatch center. Uh, Officer Kelly Coughlin was on the phone with a caller or complainant. Um, it was uh, the babysitter for Jennifer Dulos. And Officer Coughlin kind of alerted my attention and said, hey, why don't you listen in? She put the, uh, the phone on speaker. If based on what you heard from that call, what did you do? Uh, the caller stated that Jennifer did not. Uh, Objection, hearsay. Oh. 
was, the question was what did, and it's non responsive. Mm -hmm. If I may, it's not offered for the truth of the matter, Your Honor. My question was based on the call, what did you do? It's offered to show what his next steps were in his investigation. Well, the objection. Thanks, Danielle. The objection is overruled. You can answer, sir. Uh, the caller stated that Jennifer did not uh, go to a doctor's appointment in New York City and that she was missing. And given the information that uh, Kelly Coughlin, our dispatcher, got at that time, uh, Matt Blank, Officer Matthew Blank, and myself responded to 69 Wells Lane to check that property to see if we could find Jennifer. What type of area is 69 Wells Lane? It's a residential area, and that street is a dead end cul de sac. Do you recall around what time you went there? Uh, approximately 7 p.m. Your other state has offered states one. Uh, and just for the record, if I can, I have, I intend to show photographs with respect to witnesses. I have put them on a disc and shown copies to counsel. I am offering that uh, to play states one at this time. I don't believe that there's an objection. No, no objection. I just want to make sure you're the scene. There's all these discs. So if I could just for a moment converse with counsel. No objection. States one will be admitted as a full exhibit. Thank you. And Your Honor, if I may, it is associated with a state's 1A. 1A contains a one-page, uh, I guess, screenshot of each of the photographs that the state intends to introduce to keep track of what is contained on one, on state's 1. So if I may. Lieutenant Lotteret, if I can please draw your attention to the screen behind you. Give it one moment. Okay, this, this part. Do you recognize what's depicted in that photograph? Yeah, you guys already saw that. What is it? Uh, it is an uh, overhead camera view of uh, 69 Wells Lane in the canyon. Your Honor, may I ask uh, Lieutenant Atrat to approach the screen and yeah. ask some questions at that point? Thank you, sir, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Now, you indicated you responded to 69 Wells. Is 69 Wells Lane uh, depicted in that photograph? Yes. Could you please point to it? It says residence here. The end of the cul-de-sac is here. The driveway comes up to the residence, which is here. And for the record, I believe uh, you're pointing to the middle bottom of the center, I guess, on the screen. Is yes. that correct? This residence. Thank you. Now, with respect to you indicated it's a cul-de-sac, does it go out to a road? Could you point to where the road is, please? Uh, this is Wells Lane. It does travel this direction, and Frogtown Road is out here. You may have a seat, sir. Thank you. So, when you arrived at 69 Wellesley, was it dark out? No, not yet. How would you describe it? Uh, daylight, you can see. Okay. Were you looking for anything in particular? Uh, we were looking for Jennifer Dulos, the missing person. And what did you do? Uh, Officer Blank and myself uh, went to the front door. Uh, we rang the doorbell, we knocked on the door, and there was no answer. And again, I'm going to refer you to the screen behind you, sir. And if you can, take a look. This, if you can, please, uh, do you recognize what's depicted on that screen? Yes. Could you please describe what that is? Uh, that is a view of 69 Wells Lane from the bottom of the driveway, uh, looking up the driveway at the residence. And is that uh, what Wells Lane looked like that night when you responded? Yes. Now, you indicated it wasn't dark or it was still light. You could see. Is that the time of day? Did it yes. Accurately? If I can, just on the top screen, it does... For the record, Your Honor, this is, it indicates 1-101, so essentially the first picture on States 1, just for ID purposes. Um, I'm going to show you, sir, what's marked on the top corner as 2, uh, picture 2. Do you recognize what's depicted in that photograph? Yes, the front of the residence at 69 Wells Lane. Now, with, you indicated you knocked on some doors. Is the door that you knocked on it contained in that photograph? It is, yes. If you wouldn't mind. Okay. If you can just stand up and point, please. Thank you. This is the front door of the residence. Okay. Did you go up to the front door of the residence that day? We did, yes. Okay. Were there any lights on on the property? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. If you can't, just have a seat, sir. Thank you. Now, did anybody answer? Uh, there was no answer at the residence. No, it states three. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. It states one, picture three. If you can uh, look behind you again, sir. What does that depict? It's a picture of the front of the residence. Okay. Is this more of a, I guess, is the same door that was on the previous picture depicted yes. in this? Yes. Okay. If you can, just point it out briefly. This is the, uh, the front door of the residence at 69 Wells Lane. Thank you. For the record, that's on the lower left-hand portion. 
and states one, picture four. Um, what does this also depict? And that is a view of the front of the house. It uh, appears to be the side of the garage. On okay. um, the right-hand side of that picture will be the driveway for the uh, garage doors. Which states one, picture five. Uh, if you can, just take a look and indicate what that shows. Uh, that is the driveway leading to the residence, and it depicts the, uh, the garage door area of that residence. When you arrived that day after you knocked on doors, did you go anywhere else on the property or anywhere depicted in these photographs? Yes, uh, Officer Blank and I did walk uh, the perimeter of the residence to see if uh, we could see anybody inside, to see if any looked like anybody was home. We then returned to the driveway where the garage doors were, and uh, we were provided a code to the garage door by the, uh, the complainant, the babysitter, uh, and we used that code to enter the garage. Okay. I'm going to walk through and ask you a couple questions about that if I can. Uh, but first, if we can, states one, picture six, if you can take a look behind you. What does that show, sir? It shows the, uh, the rear of the residence at 69 Wells Lane. And by the way, this is obviously more light. Is this photograph taken that night? It was not, no. Okay, but does it fairly and accurately depict where you went that night? Yes. Are there doors on the back side of the house, please? There is, yes. Where are they? If you wouldn't mind taking putting up and pointing to them, please. There's a door here, and there's a French doors here. Okay, thank you. You can see. Sir, did you knock on those doors? Uh, we did not. Uh, we simply walked around the primitive residence, looked inside to see if those doors were unlocked. They were secure. Locked. Did you touch any of the doorknobs? We did, yes. In the course of touching the doorknobs, did you wear gloves? We were not wearing gloves, no. Now, you indicated also that you went back to the garage area. Did you attempt to get in through the garage? We did. How did you do that? Uh, we provided a garage code uh, from the babysitter. Uh, Officer Coughlin provided that garage code to Officer Blank and myself. We entered that garage code into the keypad, and the garage door opened. Sir, states one, picture seven. You can take a look behind you, please. Thank you. Do you uh, what is depicted on that photograph, please? That is a picture of the garage. It was a three-car garage in the center bay, and that garage was a black SUV. Um, it also depicts the keypad that we used to open that garage door. Did the other garage bays have keypads? Keypad access? They did not know. Now, as you entered the garage, what did you see? Uh, the black SUV uh, pictured, and it had a New York registration plate. Did you do anything next, I guess? Yes. Uh, also, Blank uh, called over the radio to our dispatcher, that registration, New York registration plate, to see who the registered owner was and see you know, who, who owned that vehicle and why it was there. Why did you do that? Uh, an attempt to try to figure out where the missing person was. Did you enter the garage? We did. Could you, did you describe the inside of the garage for us, please? Uh, the left garage bay was empty. The right garage bay was empty. Uh, a black SUV pictured was in the center garage bay. Um, in front of this vehicle, in the middle of the garage, there was a door that led from the garage into the residence. Is that door depicted on that photograph? It is, yes. If you can't, can you just... This is the door leading from the garage to the residence. Thank you. And for the record, you're pointing to, uh, say, the center of the photograph? Thank you. Sir, did you? This is the door leading from the garage to the residence. Thank you. And for the record, you're pointing to, uh, say, the center of the photograph? Thank you. Sir, did you notice anything in the garage uh, that drew your attention? Uh, also, Blank and myself entered the garage. We walked to the left of that SUV, the driver's side of that vehicle. We walked to the front of that vehicle. Uh, I checked the doorknob from the garage, leading from the garage into the residence. The doorknob was unlocked. We waited in front of that vehicle at the door until the dispatcher got back that registration information to us. While we waited, uh, I looked at the vehicle and noticed that there was uh, what appeared to be red blood on the front of that vehicle. Can you please describe what you saw? Uh, a red mark on the grill area of the vehicle um, and again it drew my attention because it didn't match the color of the grill didn't match the color of the vehicle was there any damage to the vehicle no we did not we looked at the vehicle uh did not observe any damage initially officer blank and myself discussed it possibly could be a deer strike uh in the roadway and again there was no hair there was no damage indicating uh any such um, collision with the deer no officer blank was with you during this time period yes and was it your testimony that Officer Blank had a body cam on? Yes. Okay. If I can, Your Honor, the state's intention is to offer at this time states two, which I don't believe there's any objection. If I can just confer with counsel. <coughs> I believe there's no objection, Your Honor. 
Page two, admit it as a full exhibit. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, I'm going to draw your attention just briefly, if I can, to the screen behind you and then uh, ask you a question if I can. <clears throat> Do you recognize, sir, what's depicted on that photograph? Or I'm sorry, on that screen? It appears to be body camera footage. Is that the body camera footage from May 24, 2019? Yes. Is that actually yourself on the screen? It is, yes. Okay. Your Honor, the state's intention is to just play it through. I believe it is about 20 minutes. Sir, if you can direct your attention to the screen while we play it. Thank you. turn down the audio whatever the hell that sound is what, what are they carrying around uh, like a ball and chain or something or? they brought a convict over to investigate watch somebody will try to explain it uh, as what it is Instead of just accepting that I'm joking around. Well, Gray, what it was was a. Jackie. Jackie O, it looked like. Yeah. Why do you guys think there's only 98 people watching this? Said that Plato, Jackie O. Remember? No way, that was Jennifer Dulos. Look, <laughs> just like Jackie uh, Kennedy. Come on, there's no way that was her. I guess I guess it could be. Uh, I could see her looking like that. She tried to look like her. Let's put it that way. 
Yeah, that's what I said, Plato. When I was going in the walkthrough, didn't you hear me say that looks like Jackie O? Maybe I'm maybe I'm silenced. I don't know. out the front I mean none of this stuff up here is I, I haven't heard that there's any relevance to the I mean the kitchen I think and the garage or the main places but anyways if you guys uh, if you're out there and you can help support the channel that'd be awesome I mean who else is doing this with the Google Earth that will be shown. Cow, yeah, listen to that. Crazy. What the hell is he dragging around? Yeah, you might have turned off your notifications on your phone, Sandy. Bigger than the whole office that I just built. I thought that was a dog, but it's a little horse. Yeah, of course they're looking for her in the house. They went there to do a welfare check. They're looking for Jennifer Dulos or signs that something may have happened. Something like that. I try not to explain every little thing. You know, like it seems like some of the stuff's really obvious. What the hell is this part of the house? That's the basement. Man, that's huge. Or not even the basement. What? What is this? Like the, I guess an unfinished portion of the first floor or something. I don't know. But that's crazy. Mm 
Georgina. Where, Georgina? Definitely have to try to reach the goal though on the show, or we aren't going to be able to do a, a second day. So it's got to be, got to keep everything going, or it's not worth it for me to do these. All right. There we go. So now it feels like they're on the ground floor. It be like a. It's nothing like Watts at all, Daniel. You're saying what reminds you is just the walkthrough with the camera. The case is nothing similar whatsoever. And you know that's my reaction every time when someone tries to compare everything to Watts. Thank you, Claudia Neubauer. Uh, if you have a cell phone, it says uh, at the top of your screen, tap on your profile on uh, your YouTube app, and then tap settings, and then tap notifications. All right. So you tap tap on your picture, and then settings, and then notifications. Strange. Yeah, so there's that second right in the middle, and that's the you know, from up above, you gotta zoom in right there, it's that middle door right there. I think Photos was just around the corner to the right there. That's my opinion. He could have also had a key, I guess, to get into the damn place. But. I don't think he did. 
See, there's little smudges of blood all over the place. Mm -hmm. Whatever they hit, what would make you think? I mean, <laughs> I think it's just really strange to say whatever you hit, it went down. You have a missing person that hasn't shown up for meetings, and your thought is that they hit a deer. I mean, I mean, it seems like you, you would have to be a little bit more suspicious. I bet. I get. Here's what I'll bet you: that any detective going to the scene wouldn't think it was a deer. It wouldn't even cross their mind right off the get-go. I bet it never would have crossed any of your minds. Because you cover true crime. A lot of these guys, they just, I don't know, they show up on scenes, they arrest people, and they're not really thinking of it like that. How, how could you possibly be thinking, well, they hit a deer. I don't see any marks from the deer, but uh, maybe that's where the blood came from. Yeah. It's hard to get a picture of the flash of this thing isn't working right Man, is this like the deadest chat you've ever seen in your life right here? Looks like he's standing on a blood smear. What the hell is he doing with that left? <laughs> Oh, look at that. There's the basketball hoop right there. They even put that on there. I thought said he came back to the Maybe Huh? Well, I just edited it down. I didn't make the video. Yeah. yeah, I do this about me. Especially because like, it's like a pattern here. You know what I mean? It's cool. Right, not her. But there, it's up here, too. It's hard to get any of this. Camera. Look at that right there in the Hopefully front of the. Look at this on the front of the. Hold on, that, that's crazy. Look at, that, look at all that. That's interesting. That means she kind of was already sort of heading to the door and was attacked right there. Unless, uh, like, photos just had blood on him and it smeared over there. Yeah, I do this about me. Especially, it's like, it's like a pattern here. You know what I mean? It's cool. Right. Like, not her. But there, it's up here, too. Yeah, I can see you little, right there, like, right here. See that? Hard to get any of this. Yeah, right, right, right here. There's a big smear right there. Usually, if you hit a deer and you run your car, you take the car wash away. Especially a Range Rover. Get your light out of here. 
Lieutenant uh, Latourette, just a couple questions if I can, based on what we just saw. So, when an individual wears a body camera, where do they normally wear it? Uh, on the center of their body to project uh, what kind of the, the officer would see. Throughout the course of your walking through 69 Wells, uh, did you look into closets and other, uh, I guess, cubby holes, if you will? Yes, we, we checked the residence for anywhere we believed a person could be. And there was also a uh, photograph taken of a picture of the children on the wall. Uh, do you recall that on the video in States 2? Yes. Uh, why was that photograph taken? Uh, just to see if we could, uh, who lived at the residence, any possible re um, occupants of the residence, and to see if that might help us in identifying or locating our missing person. While you were conducting the search of 69 Wells, did you wear gloves? Did not, no. Did Officer Blanks wear, wear gloves? No. Now, there's also a uh, point in the video in States 2 that there was a person in the kitchen. Do you recall that? Yes. Uh, Officer Coughlin had relayed to Officer Blank and myself that the, there was a Jennifer's purse was between the mudroom and the kitchen. And normally, if she was not home. Objection. You're saying. Well, the response was the purse was between the mudroom and the kitchen. And then the court does not know what was coming next. Well, my question for the court's uh, knowledge, my next question was going to be, why did you go through the purse? That's irrelevant. Well, overruled. So the uh, the babysitter, Lauren, had told Officer Coughlin that the, uh, the purse would normally not be at the residence if Jennifer was not at the residence. So we looked at the uh, the purse to see if we could find any information. As yeah, Daryl's talking about photos, but he didn't take... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's true, right? Like, why didn't he take Jennifer's... Well, the car that's sitting in there isn't Jennifer's car, though. You know, he probably didn't even notice that. So the car that's in there is another vehicle in the garage. Jennifer's car is um, found in a different location a couple miles away. To where Jennifer might be. And he just might not have noticed that. First, it was a spring light type jacket. And inside, we noticed a, a notepad that Officer Blank looked at. And we also noticed there was a key fob uh, or a set of keys for a Chevy vehicle. With respect to that Chevy vehicle, did you, well, withdraw that if I can. Uh, did you do anything with those keys? Yes, those keys were taken taken from 69 Wells Lane, and we ultimately took them to Lapham Road, where the Chevy was located by Captain Walsh. Where is Lapham Road? Lapham Road is in the southwestern area of New Canaan, and it uh, borders Waveney Park. What is Waveney Park? Uh, Waveney Park is a large uh, acreage area in New Canaan. Um, it is a public park that's open to the community and it has several walking trails, has a dog park, has a swimming pool, has uh, playing fields. So it's a, a community park. Thank you. I'm going to show you and direct your attention back to the screen behind you. The state is returning to states one. Great. Play. <coughs> Place on it. Okay. States one, uh, picture marked 11. Do you recognize what's depicted on that photograph, sir? Yes, it's an aerial photo of a uh, portion of Waveney Park. It also includes Lapham Road. Oh, I know where that is. Would you mind, sir, uh, if it's okay with the court, if I can have him stand up and just uh, answer a few questions about that screen? Thanks, Skelton, dude. Please identify Lapham Road if it's on, on that photograph. Lapham Road runs here. And there is another road, I'm sorry, just for the record, uh, that was, I guess, well, let me ask this, is that north or south? Uh, the way I orient Lapham Road in regards to this map is it runs north and south. Thanks, Kubi. And this road here is Merritt Parkway, I call uh, in the portion of New Canaan. Uh, Merritt Parkway runs easterly. Okay, so uh, for the record, for Lapham Road north to south, would be in the middle of States 1, picture 11, and Merritt Parkway would be bottom, <laughs> I guess, left to right. Hey, look at is a moose yes, right with Bigfoot right. riding it. Got abducted. Is Wavy Park depicted on that photograph? Yes, yes the, uh, to the right. Wavy Park is this area here. Man, this is still just in this area here is a mulch pile. Thank you so much, Scout and Dude and Kubi. Uh, like this whole case is just all ingrained in my brain. I mean not the whole case because I don't know all the stuff that they have, but 
this stuff right here is really like I just remember it. It's weird. Um, the town of uh, the Canaan Public Works collects leaves and they mulch them in this area. And just for the record, the um, Wavy Park would be on the, I guess if you look at the right side of the photograph and the mulch pile, I guess in the middle. Is that correct? Sir? Yes, this is the mulch pile, right side of the photograph. Of Park. Thank you. Is there an entrance onto or into Waveney Park from Lapham Road? Yes. Where is that? Uh, as you look at the picture, the entrance to Waveney Park is going to be here. You can see the uh, roadway going up through the park. You say roadway, is that for vehicles? It is, yes. Is there any entrance to Waveney Park off of Lap Lapham Road that is for pedestrians? Uh, yes, there's hiking trails all throughout the wooded area surrounding the park. Along the Lapham Road, there is uh, pull-offs on the dirt area uh, alongside Lapham Road, both both sides of the roadway. By pull-offs, what do you mean? Uh, it's an area on the shoulder of the road. Uh, it's just dirt where vehicles have parked, and uh, it's, it allows a vehicle to park fully off the travel portion of Lapham Road. And where are there cutoffs, if you will, pull-offs? <laughs> Uh, off of Lapa Road, on, are they depicted on that photograph? Uh, you can't really see them due to the wooded area. However, they're going to be north of the Merritt Parkway. So I think I got the right the spot. In the Merritt Parkway. Ah, here nailed it. Will be where all those pull-offs are. In, see you guys? Uh, Let me see if I could. Look at I have them right here. There's the mulch okay. pile, and here's this, and boom, I have two of them. The two spots right here in exactly to the spot. Right, uh, the uh, mulch pile, is that on the upper middle to the left? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Are, can you see the, I guess, some of the cutoffs on that? It, it is hard to see because of the tree line, uh, the vegetation. However, um, some of these open areas and vegetation would be some of the pull-offs. Again, they're both sides of the roadway, both sides of Lapham Road. Did you go to Lapham Road that day? Yes. Is where? You, well, where did you go? Well, we went to this area here on the uh, southern shoulder of Lapham Road. Why did you go there? Uh, Captain Walsh located a black Chevy Suburban that Jennifer Durbos drives. Did you bring anything with you? Yes, the, uh, um, a Chevy key fob out of a purse located at 69 Wells Lane. Uh, you can have a seat, sir, if I can. I have her Suburban right here. Let's see if that's going to be good. Picture 12. Sorry, if you could take a look behind you. Do you recognize what's depicted in that photograph? Yes. What is it? That is the area of Lapham Road that I just described. Uh, All right, let's see. I'm going to pause it. So there's like a tree and then an inlet and then another tree. Did I get it? And then right here. So I think they have it right. I don't think it's that one. I think it's this one right here because there's a tree and a tree. Let's see. Yeah. So I think it's right here. Is there rocks in front now? There's a bigger space there. Maybe it's this one. Let me just roll up into here. Might be just around that corner. Hold on. I can kind of, I think it might be this next one. I think that tree right here is this one because it's sticking way out into the road. See that? There really isn't any more doing that. So I think that tree is that one. And then these are, is maybe this one here. And then, but I don't see these stones on the ground. Now that's what's kind of interesting about it. They could be just off to the side though. You can't see them, but. The pull off parking spaces. Yeah, that's her vehicle. That's an actual photograph of it. When you say southbound shoulder, is that the, if you are, well, could you just explain it with direction of the Merritt Parkway? Uh, perhaps if you can stand up again, I'm sorry. But so where would the direction of the Merritt Parkway be in relation to this photograph? So the, the black Chevy Suburban, that, Suburban in this picture is pointing in the direction of the Merritt Parkway. So as the Lapham Road travels towards Merritt Parkway, that Chevy Suburban is parked on the right-hand side of the road. All right. Did the vehicle look like that when you arrived that night? Yes. Did you go to Lapham 
What is it? What is the area of land? I just want to try this one more time. Yeah, so that's definitely not over here. Let's see if it's this one. Yeah, so it's not that. And I think it's just around this corner here. Man, I wish this was a different time of year so I could see the branches. Let me just go around a little bit more. I wonder if that one... Okay, that's the one right there. Okay, see that? Can you guys see that right here? See how it's sort of the, this tree how it branches up like that? If, as a matter of fact, if I back up a little bit, you can probably see right in there, it's exactly the same as this one. So that is going to be... All right, so he's not in this one, and she's parked, the vehicle's parked right here, and somehow it's just out of range of these rocks. So it is right where you had it. <laughs> All right, let's put a pin just to make sure. So if I put a pin right here and say test, let's see. And it's, uh, I guess it's just, you know, a couple of feet up the road there. I mean, I don't know how many feet that is, but, you know, basically the same place. But I'm going to move this then just that little bit right into there. And get rid of that one. Appham Road that I just described, uh, the pull-off parking spaces. Um, that is the southbound shoulder. When you say southbound shoulder, is that so, if you are, well, could you just explain it with direction of the Merritt Parkway? Uh, perhaps if you can stand up again, I'm sorry, but so where would the direction of the Merritt Parkway be in relation to this photograph? So the, the black Chevy Suburban, the Suburban in this picture is pointing in the direction of the Merritt Parkway. So as the back of the road travels towards Merritt Parkway, the Chevy Suburban is parked on the right-hand side of the road. Did the vehicle look like that when you arrived that night? Yes. Oh, my God. Just if I may just have a moment, Your Honor, the yep. TV. They didn't know that she was just missing, Zosa. They go. didn't have any other information right. other than she was missing. But I'm sure right, they sir, told uh, her something. When you, you know. arrived, it was Officer Blank with you? Uh, we t had different patrol vehicles, but we both traveled from 69 Wells Lane to Lapham Road. Is there another cutout or pullout depicted on that photograph? Yes. Uh, could you point to it, please? This area here, don't pull up. At the center middle of the photograph? Yes. Is there another one on the other side, like towards the Merritt Parkway side? There is, yes. How many cutoffs are on that side of the road? I, I believe three or four. Which, there are three or four. Do you recall how many were, be, were behind, I guess, facing north of the of the Chevy, and how many were in front going towards the Merritt Parkway? Like one behind and at least one in front. You can have a seat, sir. I'm sorry. And just briefly, uh, States 1, picture 11. Do you recognize that? Yes. What is that, please? There it is. There's the Chevy's front. front. No. Did you, uh, what did you do when she you got to one. Lapham Road? Oh, we were looking for a missing person, Jennifer Dulos, Officer Blank and myself uh, checked the trail that runs parallel to the Merritt Parkway. We walked uh, look on the trail looking for anything that would lead us to the missing person. Okay, when you say parallel to the Merritt Parkway, if I can go back to the... States 1, picture 11. Uh, is the area that you walked depicted in that photograph? Yes. Could you Thank you, Michelle. Like H. <laughs> so the suburban was found in this area on a pull off. Officer Blake and myself walked on a trail parallel to the parkway in this area. Why'd you go there? Uh, looking for any uh, indications of a missing person. You, did you take note of anything in your walk? No. What did you do after you did that? Uh, you the, a police officer from Wilton Police Department uh, arrived on the scene, a canine officer. Officer Blank and I returned to Lapham Road where the Suburban was located. What did you do next, if anything? Uh, officer Blank assisted uh, the canine officer. I stayed with the vehicle and Captain Walsh on Lapham Road. At some point, did you return to 69 Wells? Yes. 
Did you go into Waveney Park, by the way, at any point besides that walk on, um, that you just described? No. When did you return to 69 Wells? Uh, after the canine conducted a search in the area of Lapham Road in Waveney Park, um, no track was uh, able to be established. So I was instructed to go to, from Lapham Road with a canine handler back to Wells Lane to see if we could do a search from that location. Did you follow the canine into Waveney Park or anything like that? No. Okay. So when you returned to 269 Wells, did you return with Officer Blank? No. And what did you do when you returned to 69 Wells? As myself and the canine handler from Wilton Police Department arrived at 69 Wells. I used that code that was provided to open that garage door, and we entered the garage. Uh, the canine handler stated he needed a scent item in order to conduct a search for the missing person, Jennifer Dulos. Uh, I knew there was a spring jacket located on top of the purse, so we went to that location, grabbed that spring jacket. What did you do with the jacket? Uh, the canine handler, handler placed it in the, uh, the middle of the driveway uh, for his canine to get a scent. Now, did the canine conduct the search? Uh, it, it did. Okay, did you have... Yeah, but hey, Amy, we're a day behind here, okay? So we're just going to do the trial at our own pace. So if you see something in the news, we don't want to hear about it in here or anything like that because we I got permission to play Law and Crimes trial a day behind, and perhaps what you're referring to is something that shows up in day two when the cross-examination and, you know, something like that. Any, play any role in connection with that search? No, I stayed in the driveway. What did you do? Okay. Uh, well, well, we haven't like watched the trial yet again? to know, though, right? Yes. So. Did, did you make any further observations in the garage? Yes. Well, what did you observe? When we entered the garage, we went on the right side of the vehicle, uh, the black SUV, a Range Rover, uh, on the right passenger side of the vehicle, on the but, floor, I observed what appeared to be a... Actually, I don't care. Just whatever, whatever you guys want to talk about, talk about. You know, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to get to do a day two or three or four anyway, so just do whatever you guys want to talk about. I got to do what's best for the channel a lot of times, unfortunately. Footprint, uh, a red, a reddish in color, could have been a footprint of blood. So don't worry about it, Amy. Just say whatever you want to say. States 1, photograph 9. Sorry, I'm going to have you take a look behind you again. If you can. Do you recognize what's depicted in that photograph? Yes. And I'm going to scroll in. What is that? It appears to be a toe portion of a footprint. Anyway. Look at that. Is that what you That's so obvious. in the garage that night? Yes. Did you make any other observations? Yes. Uh, to the right uh, side of that garage, as you enter the garage door, uh, there was garbage cans. Uh, on the exterior of the garbage can near the lid, there appeared to be a red color that appeared to be blood. And anything else? Uh, not that I can recall at this time. Uh, I'm going to show you two more photographs if I can. Sorry, if you could take a look behind you. Uh, one. Yeah, I'm excited Graphic to see it too, but might not be able to, Zozo. Uh, you can tell. I mean, it's just. Yes, there's be drops on the rear portion, the rear left or driver's side of that vehicle, drops on a uh, concrete floor. And one more, please, States 10. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, States 1, photograph 10. Uh, do you recognize what's depicted in that photograph? I mean, it might be something where I can play the, I'll try to do the actual, like what we used to do during the day and just play it. And, you know, just sort of early and then have my normal show at night because I, I can't I can't have this substitute the normal show if this is with the turnout, you know, 140, 150 people watching. Um, it's just it's not really conducive to helping my channel at all. You get what I'm saying? Uh, yes, it appears to be an area of the concrete floor uh, that appears to be smeared uh, pinkish, reddish in color as if something was cleaned up. Thank you, wise Did child. you, after making these observations, did you convey them to anybody? Yes, I notified the shift commander, Lieutenant Ogrinks, and Captain Walsh, who was still in Lapham Road with the uh, Chevy Suburban. What did you do uh, next, if anything? Uh, Detective Officer Patton uh, arrived at 69 Wells Lane. It was determined that that location was going to be a crime scene, and the shift commander notified the uh, state police. Why the state police? Uh, the crime, crime investigations. Uh, may I ask, uh, does New Canaan have a crime scene unit? Uh, we have a, an investigative unit, um, but we don't have uh, the capabilities that the state police has. In what way? Uh, limited resources. Okay. And uh, did the state police come out to 69 Wells that night? Yes. Uh, did you have any? Yeah, Claudia, we had her on the show even. <laughs> well, she took, she was in videos and stuff with photos, Dulos. It was pretty funny. 
further inform? I mean, um, did you do yeah, anything Claudia. else on that? Yes, uh, later on in the evening, while still at 69 Wells Lane, I believe it was around 11.30 p.m., I conducted a neighborhood canvas, which means I go door to door, just seeing if I can find any information in regards to whatever the case is we're, we're investigating. Um, I did speak to a few neighbors. I was also looking for any cameras that residences might have, whether it's a ring camera Thank you, alley cat. or security footage cameras is, uh, on any houses and residences. Did you download any video cameras or anything that night? No. Uh, now, at some point, did you get your fingerprints or palm prints? Uh, yes. I guess tested, is that the right word? Yes, a, uh, one of the state police investigators uh, from the crime uh, unit came out and they took palm prints, hand prints, fingerprints from, of me. And that was in connection with this case? Yes. Okay. Let me just have one moment, Your Honor. I have nothing further, thank you. Cross-examination. <clears throat> Plug in my um, USB cord that it, uh, so Don't you guys remember so when Claudia was, she came on the show and there was like, she was in the background. <laughs> Good afternoon, Lieutenant. My name is John Schoenhorn. I represent Michelle Chisholm in this case. I just have a few questions. Um, the time that was on the video, uh, the video body camera that we watched, was that accurate? I don't remember what time uh, the video camera showed. Well, my notes said that it started at 17, looked like 1757, that would be about uh, 757 at night, is that right? I'm sorry, say that again? Let me, let me rephrase You said question. that wrong. If it says at some point as we're watching it, 20, like 20 colon zero zero. You didn't say that, you said 17. Yes. And to the best of your knowledge, were the uh, body cameras even back then synchronized so that they were at least close in time to actual time that you were there? Yes. So is it fair to say that you were in that house at approximately 8 p.m. on uh, May 20th? Yeah, but you said yes. 17 something. You said, I think you did say that it was still light out, correct? Yes. And you were not yourself wearing a body camera that night, is that right? I was not, no. Now I noticed in your uniform today, you have a box in the center of your uniform just below your your body microphone. Is that where the body camera would have been on Officer Blank that night? Yes. So it's center of the body, sort of view of the person who is wearing, correct? Correct. And of course, you've seen that video prior to just now, correct? Correct. As you went through the house, you looked at each and every room, right? Yes. You looked in closets, I think was the answer to one of the questions by the state, right? Yes. And in a couple of the places, there were some clothing on the floor, according to that video, correct? Yes. Did you go through any of the items of clothing at that point, other than the jacket you mentioned? No. <clears throat> you talked about a canine. Was this a tracking dog? Uh, I'd have to ask the Wilton uh, canine handler. Well, I was going to ask you, was there more than one dog that night that was sent to the, either to uh, the house on Wells Lane or to the uh, Waveney Park. Yes, more canines were called to that area after the Wilton uh, Police Canine had left. You indicated that Officer Blank remained at that location, is that right? At the Waveney Park that night after he left? Yes. Do you know whether he accompanied any dog search, that is, any canine uh, searching dog that night? He did assist the Wilton Canine that I was assisting at Wells Lane. He did assist that canine handler at Lapham Road and Waveney Park. And just so that we're differentiating between the two, do you... Hey, thanks, Claudia, but you don't have to keep, you know, I mean, it's like you've already sent in multiple. If other people aren't, uh, you know, interested in it today, I guess we'll just, you know, I got to do, I, I'm, I'm serious, I got to do what's better for the channel. You know, me making videos and doing live streams about things that people really want to talk about. You can see the speed of the chats really slow doing this. I was hoping that more people would show up. Maybe there'll be more in a little bit. I got a couple more hours. I appreciate it. Uh, Claudia, but you know, I don't want you to feel like you got to keep. You know, I know that you're really interested in the case and everything. And Law and Crimes playing it every day live. I'm just do what I'm doing is I'm editing out all of the breaks, all of the you know sort of sideshow stuff, and then um, also um, you know then I speed it up slightly. Like you can't even tell this is sped up, right? I mean, it's just 85. It's 15 percent faster. that that was a canine and a canine handler from the town of Newtown. 
It was uh, Wilton. Oh, yes, well, thank you, Claudia. Yeah. I don't want you to have it be a burden on you, though. The, the initial one that initially responded uh, was a Wilton canine. All right, so same one or different one that went with you? Same one. All right, so I'm saying was there a separate canine dog and a handler that came there that night that you're aware of? Uh, there very well could have been. I don't remember at this time. Probably would have been like June of 2019. You did not observe Officer Blank accompanying a canine handler into the woods at Wayback. I did, yes. You did? Yes. Was it the same dog that then went with you and its handler to uh, the house at 6th at Wells Lane? Yes. In the, parking lot, in the parking lot right outside of the garage, you recall, according to the uh, your images, that there was a basketball hoop there. Did you notice that? Yes. Was the basketball hoop facing the garage or was it facing away from the garage? Facing the garage. You indicated that you took a key fob with you from the house. Is that right? Yes. Did you use that key fob to see if it connected to the suburban pathway? I did not, know. Who did you give that fob to? Uh, Officer Blank. Did you observe Officer Blank use that fob to open up the, or to attempt to open the uh, locked door on the suburban? I did not know. Now, if I could just go back for a moment to, there's the image, I believe, 11, states 11 on this exhibit. And I just want to clarify, if you would look behind you there, I'm not going to ask you to see. See, that's the thing, is that's how it works. As a, so if I do the morning show, they only do one or two notifications a day, maybe. And so that's a, that's a problem, right? So if I do this show and nobody's watching, and then later I do my normal show and it doesn't send out notifications, I get screwed on both ends, okay? So it has to be worth my time to do this show just by itself, and then it would just be extra if I could get the evening show off. Do you get what I'm saying? And I'm, I, 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 try, I try to share what's going on with you guys in my, how things work and everything on my, you know, in, on YouTube and the channel and how things are going and stuff like that. So it's really up to you. Stand up. But this is the satellite image of Waveney Park. Is that correct? A portion of Waveney Park. Yes. All right. And I want to clarify directions. You said that the Merritt Parkway heads basically east and west through the chain. Is that right? Generally, yes. Right. So would you just indicate whether east is to the right of this image or to the left of this image? Uh, east right. is to the uh, right. It's going to be. Uh, rephrase the question, sir. Yeah, you're, you're looking at an image on a screen. Mm -hmm. Is right. it on this side closest to the window and the jury, or is it closer to the judge where he's sitting compared to where you are? It's going to be closer to the window, closer to the jury, the right-hand side of the picture. All right. And I'm just going to use my mouse for a, a section. You indicated, did you not, if you look at the screen, that you walked along a section of the park in a easterly, easterly direction parallel to the Merritt Parkway. Is that right? Yes. The... Did you also go across Lapham in a westerly direction, in this, in this other direction here, across I, I, the other side? I did not, know. And so that we're also clear. Okay, here, here's what it says on uh, about it. Viewers can get a maximum of three new video notifications from each channel in a 24-hour period. Right, so, but that, what that means is, remember yesterday when I uploaded a video at like noon or so? And then all of a sudden, I, and then uh, in the evening, I did a live show, so that's two. And then at noon today, that, if I did one at noon today, that would have been all three in a 24-hour period. But this one's a little bit later, so now we're adding in last night's show, this show, and if I wanted to upload a video today, which do way better for my channel in terms of getting subs, etc., uh, that would have made up three. So it takes away my ability to upload videos, too. So that's why I'm trying to let you guys know how this works. All right. Thanks, Kendra B. So, you know, weird decisions you got to make. I mean, if I want to upload, let's say, a video um, on Delphi or Idaho again or something like that, uh, that's one of the notifications. Then I do a live stream, and then the next morning I do a, uh, you know, did I do this one or something. Now I've already used up all three, and the one I put out later won't come be put out there. I don't know why they do it, so, so they're just, it's crazy, you know, <laughs> I have no idea. Was the, the, you're saying Lapham in this area generally is north-south, correct? Correct. Would the car, according to those pictures that we saw in the Suburban, be on the, looking at this image, on the 
Uh, oh, and look what it says right here. It says, um, if you publish more than three videos in a short period of time, we may temporarily stop sending notifications for 24 hours. <laughs> I mean, just... Side of Lapham Road looking down or on the right side from this map? The left side of Lapham Road looking down. Right. And so we're clear for the record. You're Thank you, Kendra B. You're talking about the side where you see the leaf piles, the mulch piles that we see uh, on that area, correct? Yes. Now, I just want to also orient uh, uh, the park. Does Lap, does Waveney Park include any of the area to the to this area around the leaf mulch area? Sandy, you have no idea. I don't know exactly where the property <laughs> lines are. It's I know crazy. north of the leaf pile, there is a uh, Frisbee Golf area that belongs to the park. And does the park continue and then stop at the bottom at the Merritt Parkway? The, the, that is the border of the park. This is all Mayor meaningless Parkway. questioning. If I recall correctly, correct me if I'm it's wrong. It's just to be this, this area along both sides. This is like stuff just for the sake of asking questions. There's no meaning to this at all. Of Lapham near the parkway. To make it seem like he's engaged. Above the parkway. Is that yeah. correct? Uh, I don't recall. You don't recall that if you walked along in the park, Parallel to the parkway, you're looking down. You're seeing the roofs of cars as they drive by on the main parkway. It depends on a portion of the uh, the park. Uh, certain portions may be elevated, but a lot of portions would be parallel to or even to as you're walking on the trail. Well, I'm talking about the park where you were walking. That would parallel to the road, even to the road. That side was even. Oh, by the way, we're going to pause it right here. Now, if you're sitting here and just randomly watching. Um, And you're subscribed. Make sure to do this. Maybe you have to unsubscribe. You got to hit the all notifications. See that right there? There's the bell. So you hit subscribe, the bell, and then all. If you don't hit all, it defaults to one of the other ones. Like, oh, we'll just base it on what you. All right. So maybe hit, make sure to hit that one. Uh, portions of a yes. All right, so does Lapham Road then uh, cross under the Merritt Parkway? Uh, Lapham Road goes over top. Over. So there isn't a big hill approaching the Merritt Parkway, is there? Right. On Lapham Road? On Lapham Road. No. Topper. So in order for it to go straight across Lapham Road, it has to be elevated above the Parkway, right? In certain portions, yes. Well, I'm talking about where Lapham Road crosses the Merritt Parkway. Now, what kind of birds flew parkway? over the area that night? Down to the Parkway. Right. And is that also true if you go in the other direction? Has a lot of trees. Is that a fair statement? Uh, certain portions of the park, yes. As depicted in the picture, there is a, a wide open field as well. Well, the field, I didn't ask you about the field. That's up, as you can yeah, see. Yeah, I know. He's, he's just filling in some blank. I didn't ask you correct. about the field. Of this Who cares? Sort of a lighter green and yellow. Oh, this guy's going to piss me off, I can tell you. Right? Yes. So I'm talking about the forested area. Okay. These are mature trees in that area. Isn't that true? Yes. We're talking about really tall trees with large trunks, mm -hmm. correct? Uh-huh, and? Uh, most of them. And yeah. you can walk through that area without uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. uh, falling over uh, a bunch of little oh, you're trying to and, oh. and uh, oh, okay. small bushes, correct? I get it now. Uh, they're going to go for the angle that Jennifer's still alive somewhere and escaped, and you know, like escaped to get away from it all, just didn't like her life. There you go. The, the trails are maintained. Uh, of course, before leaving, she bonked your head on a ceiling somewhere and blood got over the garage and, you know. Oh, wait, I know what it is. She tripped and fell after getting home and has had amnesia, you know, and sort of just walked away, and she's still wandering out there somewhere. Hey, I think that's what it's going to be. You're off the trail. There's going to be bushes and shrubbery. And if you go to the park to the, if you continue in a, um, in a, uh, Westerly direction, the park is also bordered by something that we see in this picture, correct? This line here. See that? Yes, sir. What is that? That is the uh, Metro North Railroad. Right. So there are, there was a, in 2019, there was an active Metro North Railroad uh, line that paralleled the western portion of the park, correct? Yes. And uh, right here by the, the base of the, uh, there's a, where there's a, the train crosses the Merritt Parkway, that's also an elevated railroad crossing, correct? Uh, I'm not familiar with that crossing at the parkway, sir. Fair enough. But right below that is a train station, is it not? 
Yes. That's the Talmadge Hill Metro North Station, correct? Yes. It's a commuter rail station, right? Yes. Let me just ask a little bit about Lapham Road. Lapham Road, I noticed we can go back to some of those pictures that we just uh, looked at. I think number 12. There's a double, there's I guess 11. There's a double yellow line, is there not, on Lapham Road in this area? Yes. So Lapham Road, at least in this area, is a major thoroughfare in the town of McCain. Is that true? It depends on your definition of a major thoroughfare. Well, we're not talking about the Merritt Parkway. Mm -hmm. I'm asking, is it a well-traveled road? Yes. So it's not a remote part of town where only local residents would use, right? Right. You've done, have you ever done traffic enforcement on Lapham Road? I have. Sometimes the, the traffic on a weekday is very heavy, isn't it? It depends on time of day. Sure. People use the park. This is a main access to get to the Waveney Park entrance. Hey, welcome, Pauline Mary. Make sure to hit that, uh, the emoji buttons. Now you got your own specific emojis. Half of them won't make any sense to you, but man, they're really cool. It is one of the entrances to the park. And there is traffic from your experience back in 2019 and before throughout the day, correct? Objection. Well, there was traffic back and forth throughout the day on the date in question. What's the objection? Relevance. Overruled. Can I repeat the question, please? Sure. Back in 2019, yeah, what is the relevance? there was a well-traveled road that during the day there would be a fair amount of traffic uh, traveling back and forth on Waveney Road, including accessing the park, correct? Again, it depends on what your interpretation or definition of fair amount of traffic is. I don't have any traffic statistics, but it was a, a, a traveled road by a, a vehicles, yes. As opposed to a remote part of McCain and which there are also things, correct? Yes. By the, these pictures that we're looking at, including Exhibit 11, uh, were these, do you know, taken that evening after, the, after you arrived at the scene? The picture on the screen, sir? Would you, if you look at the screen, please? Uh, I don't know if that picture was taken that night, because by the time I arrived on Lapper Road, it would have been dark. That's dark. Right. This yes. picture appears to have been taken uh, at least during somewhat daylight hours, correct? It appears that way, yes. Un unless somebody adjusted the lighting, but it appears not to have been taken at the time of your arrival, correct? Correct. But is that the exact position you found the vehicle parked in that turnout, turnout on Lapper Road? It appears to be, yes. By the way, when you arrived, the um, garage, was it open or closed at that residence at 69 Wells Lane? The garage, all three bays of the garage were closed. And you said, you testified that someone gave you the code so you could open it, is that right? Yes. And you opened the middle bay, is that correct? Yes. And when you first walked in, you walked to the right of the vehicle, correct? No. You walked to the left of the vehicle? Correct. And when you first walked in, you, nothing stood out to you immediately as being out of the ordinary, is that correct? When you first went in? Uh, when I first entered the garage, no. And then you went through the house, nothing stood out to you as being uh, out of place, except maybe the fact that you saw a purse on the floor, right? Correct. I have no further questions. Thank you. Did they redirect? Wow, those are so valuable, those questions. Man, those are great. Wow. Jeez, wow. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> thank you, Your Honor. If I can, Your Honor, call my next witness as well. Uh, Scott Romano. You know that that face that she's got on there reminds me of there. resting B. <laughs> Look at her, man. <clears throat> she is just that should be in the dictionary next to that one. She's just not a man. Just a not cool. Ah, uh, the girlfriend, Daryl. His girlfriend. She was helping him dispose of items, and she was very aware of what was going on. Sorry, you're not starting to turn my correctly. You could please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or solemnly and sincerely affirm as the case may be that the evidence you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God or upon penalty of perjury? Yes, I do. Please state your name and spell it for the record. Scott Romano, R-O-M-A-N-O. And your affiliation? 
uh, retired sergeant from the Kennedy Police Department. Thank you. And you may be seated. Thank, Thank you, sir. Mayor Inquirer, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Romano, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, so you are retired from the New Canaan Police Department? Correct. When did you retire? June of 2023. We know, Attica. I just told him what it was. And what rank were you when you retired? Sergeant in the and investigation it's in the title. How long were you a sergeant in the investigation section? Five years. Could you just uh, describe briefly, um, well, I'll start with this. Can you please describe <laughs> some of your crazy, training man. experience as a New Canaan Police Officer and then Sergeant? Sure. Uh, after graduating the Police Academy, I was assigned to the Patrol Division. During my time there, uh, I functioned as a motor officer, a uh, field training officer, an instructor, an accident reconstructionist uh, with a couple additional duties. And then after being promoted, I did patrol for a short time and was then assigned to the investigation section. It's his girlfriend. What kind of crimes does okay. the investigative section investigate? I guess? Yeah, everything from uh, bad checks or simple frauds to stolen vehicles to murders. Does New Canaan have a, I guess, crime scene unit? Not specifically, no. Now, I'm going to draw your attention to May of 2009. Look, as I said at the beginning of the show, I'll, I'll start over again. I read the whole damn thing. Okay, Th this case is, you know, Jennifer Dulos was murdered on May 24, 2019 in the garage, and Photos Dulos was the guy who killed her. And, and then his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, who's on trial right here, was very aware of and police believe that she was very aware of what he was doing and was helping him and was likely behind you know helping you know like the conspiracy part because uh, she would benefit from it there'd be no jennifer and you know it'd just be her okay um so i mean i guess that's that's really where it comes down to is that she was charged with conspiracy to commit murder and a host of other lesser charges the only one that i really give a damn about is the conspiracy to commit murder the rest of them are kind of these lesser sort of like obstruction of justice uh you know sort of minor ish you know in the scheme of things uh, charges right so i'm gonna have to do my public service announcement here because if you guys want me to continue to do these uh, streams on the Dulos case, we're going to have to be able to reach the goals that are a little easier to make when it's during the main stream, even though we do have days where we don't get it on there too. But uh, there isn't even a very big crowd here. So if you're out there and you're able to help support the channel, I would appreciate you considering helping me and my channel because yes I do make an income you guys are the sole source of the income and plus and and my ad revenue when I make videos and uh, yeah and I you know I try to give away a ton of it at the end of the month so there you go that's uh, my spiel specifically May 24 2019 were you working that day I was not working that day did you have occasion to respond to the New Canaan Police Department? I did. I was contacted by the on-duty um, detective who requested assistance with a missing persons case. Who was the on-duty detective? Detective Tom Patton. And the missing person? Jennifer Dulos. Yeah, I said that at the beginning. About what time or how did you get Photos contacted? Photos Dulos killed I himself, I think, in his garage. I was contacted approximately 9 p.m. Uh, I remember Detective right. Patton explained very briefly what he had been called. He was on him, house arrest. asked me to come in and assist him as we started the investigation. Where did you go? Initially, I went to the police department to grab some equipment, and then I responded to Lapham Road outside of Waveney Park, where Jennifer's vehicle had been located. Were you alone? Yes, I was. Now, did you respond uh, in uniform? No, I was in plain clothes. Where on Lapham Road did you respond to? So the vehicle was located just south of the back entrance to Waveney Park on the southbound shoulder of Lapham Road. When you arrived, was anybody else on scene? Uh, Officer Blank from the patrol division was there with the vehicle. And can you just briefly explain what Waveney Park is, please? Uh, it's approximately a 250-acre park located on the south side or south edge of New Canaan that's used for different passive recreation. May I just have one moment with counsel, Your Honor? Yes. All right, so I'm going to draw your attention to the screen behind you. States four. Um, 
uh, states for, this is uh, designated as picture 12 on the upper left corner, just for the record, Your Honor. Sir, do you recognize what is depicted in that photograph? Yes. What is it? That was Jennifer Doulos' vehicle. When did you, um, what did you do when you arrived on scene? I was briefed, brief, um, briefed quickly by Officer Blank, and then I effectively took over securing that vehicle and making sure nobody had any contact with it until we decided further what was going to need to be done with it. How did you do that? By physically staying next to the vehicle during the course of the overnight. Um, I did a preliminary walk around to make sure I understood what was there and what wasn't there, and then basically just secured it so it was not touched. Could you describe the car, please? It was a black Chevy Suburban as depicted. Um, there was nothing initially remarkable, although looking at the passenger side, which is the side that's against the wood line, it was, uh, I noted at my initial walk around with a flashlight that it appeared that something had been wiped on the side of the vehicle. There were uh, streaks in it and some marks that looked, although dirt may have been brushed off it without being washed first, there were scratches. And some small amounts of what looked like, from my experience, to be a blood-like substance in different locations on the lower part of the vehicle. I'm going to show you, sir, if you can. Seats four, picture what's marked as 11. When you uh, mentioned you did a walk around the vehicle, well, I was like that. Uh, how close was the car parked to the wood line? Uh, it was up against the brush on the side of the road, so you really couldn't get into the passenger side of the vehicle. Thank you, Gene Darcy. But without a little bit of effort. Did you attempt to? All right, now, now, now we know exactly where that is. Let me just try one more time. I want to see if that tree is right on the side here. Not that one. Oh, there it is. That's exactly right. Right here. This tree, I think it's just a different angle, but see that? Like if you were, I think if you were, could get just, ah, see it's too far now, but there's that double tree, and that's, I think that's what this is. Wanted to double check on that one. Get into the car. No, not at any point in time during the night. Now you mentioned those marks on the side of the car. Are, were those marks on the side of the car that is depicted in this photograph? No, they were on the passenger side of the car that would be against the wood line. Where on the vehicle did you see those marks? Uh, I believe it was the right passenger door and the lower section near the running board. Did you advise anybody of what you had found? I mentioned the detective patent that I noticed it, and we just, at that point, kept note of it so that we could further look into that at a later time. By the way, do you know when these photographs were taken? I believe those were taken on the morning of the 25th. So from, uh, am I correct in saying you arrived at Lapham Road at 9 o'clock? Is that your testimony? It was actually probably closer to 10.30 by the time I drove from home to work and then got to Lapham Road. Uh, could we at least have an AM versus PM? That's not been established yet, but it seems it's obvious, but I would ask that they're clear. Sure, was sure. So I was contacted at 9 p.m. On the, on the 24th, and I arrived on scene at approximately 10.30 p.m. Attorney you Manning, before you proceed, you identified this in the packet as States 4. Yes. States 4 admitted as a full exhibit? Yes, Your Honor. Without objection. She, she may not have indicated, but she asked me, and I said I had no objection. States 4 will be admitted as a full exhibit. The record has to be complete. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, and as I indicated, all the photographs are contained per witnesses, so that's why they are directed in that way. Um, so, sir, you arrived on scene between 10.30 and, uh, do you recall around what time this photograph was taken? Sometime after 7 a.m., but I don't recall exactly what time it was. Did you remain on scene the whole night? Yes, I did. Uh, who took the photograph? I believe that was Detective Matt Riley from the State Police. And did you observe him taking the photograph? I was present when he was taking the photos, yes. Thank you, Danny. I see you are in. At that time, um, when Detective Riley arrived on scene or on Lapham Road, uh, did anything happen to the car? So we eventually determined that to further investigate that it should be impounded so it could be properly processed. So we did, um, the keys had been transferred to me when I took over, so I had the keys to the vehicle. We then determined it should be towed back to police headquarters where it could be impounded inside so that nothing was disturbed. Could you please explain the process of how that tow would have happened? Or how it did happen, I should say. So we contacted the department's on-duty wrecker, which was from town. They showed up on scene. I then, uh, wearing gloves, I entered the vehicle so that we could limit any kind of exposure to anyone else. We couldn't initially start the vehicle. First, uh, first because it was left in reverse. It was not actually in park. Secondly, because the battery was dead. So what we did is used a booster pack from the towing company to actually start it, which I did in the driver's seat, and then I drove it up onto the flatbed truck so it could be brought back to police headquarters. 
It was it brought back to police headquarters? It was. It was then put inside uh, impound bay, of which I backed it off of the tow truck and parked it in the back. Did you follow the vehicle or the tow truck, I should say, from Lapham Road back to headquarters? Yes, I did. <laughs> why did why were you the person to enter the car again? Because I've been the only person that had been in the car, to our knowledge. So as far as police personnel went, I was the only one that entered it. Therefore, again, keeping any disturbance to a minimum, uh, which is the easiest way to take care of things. After the vehicle was uh, secured at headquarters, what did you do? I then responded to Wells Lane, 69 Wells Lane, and met with Sergeant Albison from the state police. Did a preliminary walkthrough of the scene, and then we began to canvas the area to see if we could find any security camera systems that may have picked up any activity in that area. When you say a preliminary walkthrough of the scene, what do you mean? I was shown the garage area and a basic uh, look at the kitchen area, and that was all. Did you walk through the rest of the house? Not at that time, no. Now, uh, well, where did you go after that? So we began with houses on Wells Lane, actually just walking the area and looking for any exterior cameras mounted on any of the houses that could have potentially picked up any activity uh, the following the previous day. I think they're going to probably say something like, um, how come the car wasn't reported seen there by anybody who drove by or anybody who saw it? It was put there later, so therefore, and then come up with some alternate theory. Sir, I'm going to direct your attention to the screen <coughs> behind you. Even though you see it leaving the house. Um, upper left corner indicates 69 Wells Lane. Do you recognize what's depicted upon that yes. photograph? Yes, I do. What is it? That is an overhead view of Wells Lane, including 69 Wells and the other adjacent houses. Uh, just briefly, and if I may, Your Honor, just if you can point it out. If you can, sir, can you please just stand up and direct where 69 Wells Lane is? So I believe this should be 69 Wells Lane. Now, when you walked the neighborhood, where did you go? We looked at any house that had a view of the street, uh, specifically 54 Wells Lane. That we observed cameras mounted on the exterior of the residence mm -hmm. that did pick up the street and would have shown anybody coming in or out, or at least we hoped it would that time. I can, sir. Uh, when you say 54 Wells Lane, I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit. Is that 54 Wells Lane? Yes, it is. And why were you interested in this property? So we noted that there were cameras on the exterior. If I can, get if you can, please. Specifically, we noted there were cameras on the front of the house, so the face, the face of Wells Lane, and on the end of the house near the garage area of the parking court. And those appeared at that time. They were picked up the street view. I found the two cameras. Right. And what did you do once you noticed the cameras? We were able to make contact uh, specifically with this residence. We were able to make contact with the owner uh, and asked him if we could review the system, which he agreed to. And we did actually look at it and noted that it picked up uh, views of the street from two locations, both the garage end and the face of the house, and reviewed it briefly. Uh, the owner was incredibly cooperative, did give us access to the unit. It was initially brought back to police headquarters to do a download of the hard drive, which we were unsuccessful at the time because we couldn't uh, get access and the owner wasn't sure how to access it. It was returned back to the owner's residence. It was reconnected. We were able to use his cell phone to review video from that day. Yeah, I mean, the, the people generally go into a trial. You're not going to testify. But if you see the writing on the wall and sort of a last-ditch effort, you can try to come in and sell something to the jury. At the time we targeted, uh, based on information we had, a morning section where we were able to pick up pictures, or video rather, of Jennifer Dulos's vehicle leaving in the morning and returning and then leaving for a second time and not returning. Okay. Now, you, a couple questions about that. You watched the, you indicated there was a time frame that you were interested in. What was that time frame? It was in the morning from just before 8 a.m. Uh, through, at that time we weren't really sure, through at least noon. And did you watch that time frame on, I guess, at the property of 54 Wells? At the property, initially we did, and that's when we noted her vehicle leaving, returning and leaving again. Now, you mentioned two cameras. If you wouldn't mind uh, standing up and approaching the screen and just pointing out where those cameras were located. So camera three is located on the south end of the house in the area of the driveway. And camera seven is located on the face of the house, the front facing out directly to Wells Lane. And Wells Lane, is that the road in front of 54 Wells? Yes, it is. And if you are heading towards the, I guess, upper left-hand corner, uh, what direction is that? It's effectively southbound. So the way if you're traveling in, Road from here to here, that's roughly wrong south. Okay. Um, and is there a road on top of that? It it's intersects with Rocktown yeah. Road, which in the picture here. I'll scroll back out. Okay. We'll be looking up here, or we can't quite see it in the trees. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, does Your Honor wish to break yes, it this time? The time is approximately 1 o'clock. We'll stand in our lunch and recess and 
Resume at 2 o'clock. Good afternoon, please be seated. Thank you. <coughs> and Sergeant Romano is resuming the stand, and we can bring the jury out. with respect to 54 wells. Do you recall those line of questioning? Yes. Okay. And you uh, testified before the break as well to about uh, obtaining video surveillance from that residence. Correct. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, how many camera angles did you, or how many cameras themselves, did you obtain from that residence? Two. Uh, could you briefly, well, what were their names? It was camera three and camera seven. What area did camera three cover? That covered the garage area looking south from the house. Did it encompass any area of the road? Yes, it did. It picked up a partial section of Wells Lane. And it, camera seven? Camera seven was mounted on the front of the house, and that picked up uh, Wells Lane as it passed in front of the residence. The road that both camera three and camera seven picked up, was that the same road? Yes. Okay, and is that Wells Lane? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, if I may just have one moment, Your Honor, <clears throat> uh, At this point, Your Honor, the state is uh, going to play states three. Sir, I'm going to ask you to direct your attention to the... State three has been admitted as a full exam. No objection. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, sir, on 54 Wells, for camera three, about how many hours did the New Kingdom Police Department or your summit download for that time or that camera? We downloaded approximately 24 hours worth of video, one whole day. Okay. And with respect to camera seven? The same amount. Uh, what was there anything of evidentiary value on those 24 hours? There was. About what time period? The first item that we noticed was at approximately 7.58 hours, okay. uh, 7.58 a.m. If I can, I'm going to direct your attention to the screen behind you. Uh, upon the state's three, I'm going to, for the record, Your Honor, play what is titled CAM 3-75800-75930. Yeah. Just going to stop it real quick. Sir, if you wouldn't mind just explaining what is depicted on that screen. So this is the driveway in front of the garage at 54 Wells Lane. It's looking effectively south, and what you'll see in the top right. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to do the go to do the crime con Nashville. It's too too quick after you know. Just I don't know. <laughs> just busy. I don't have time. It's just not. Uh, it's not interesting to me. I like to do my own thing. I mean, it's fun going to those every couple of years or so, but I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. Uh, on the screen is actually Wells Lane as it travels past the residence. If you wouldn't mind, please, if you can stand up and approach and just point out that area on that screen. Sure. So this being the driveway area, the very top is where Wells Lane passes that residence. Okay. And with respect to the numbers on the upper left hand, <coughs> what is that? That is the uh, date and time. Yeah. So see how the, this right here goes like this? straight and then boom here watch here's how you do this that's right over here that camera uh what the, what it's looking at is that straight so see how there's a, even that little curve right there and then straight and then boom like that there's the curve straight boom and then it shoots out that direction okay so that's that camera and then there's another one in the front of the house right here and so that picks up the vehicle moving. One of them does. From the actual DVR unit or the unit of the system itself that puts on uh, the video. Was that timestamp accurate? Yes, it was. And you can have a seat, sir. I'm going to hit play. <clears throat> okay, there you go, right up there. See it? It's kind of 
coming in. And so that means it's going to, I believe that means it's going to work at that time. I mean, not work, the school. So hold on, let me just see. I don't know if I remember if I have it correctly oriented. So going to, uh, well, let me ask you this. Does that vehicle that passes appear on another yeah, screen? so it's going this it direction. It shows on camera seven. God dang. During the same time frame. States going to play states three cam seven dot underscore seven five eight dash seven five. And that means it's going to it's heading zero. to school right now. And same questions I paused it right at the beginning. If you can, sir, just explain what we're looking at right here. So this is the front of the residence at fifty four Wells Lane, the driveway, and then in the background is Wells Lane as it passes in front of the residence. And the the numbers on the top, please. That is the date and time that the video was recorded. Should be coming from this, play. the same direction, just like the. I think, yeah. So it should be coming from the left here. And there it is. Boom. So that's Jennifer Dulos. She's alive. She's in the car with her, you know, taking the, uh, I don't know if it's her children, but taking one of her children to school for sure. Um, so that would be what that camera is, is this one right in front of the house looking just like that. See? If we go back to the video, see how everything's shaped right there? And isn't that super chat worthy, you guys, that I'm able to give you this extra context? context. I mean, it's just absolutely, you aren't going to see this anywhere else, all right? I think it is. All right. Anyways, let me go back to Actually, this. If I can, I am going to uh, pause it and bring it. And I pause it at this clip. It states 19 seconds. So did you watch this video uh, on May 20th? Would it be the 24th or the 25th? Uh, it was probably the 25th and beyond. How did you identify this as uh, the vehicle? I'm going to object, Your Honor. This is uh, characterization. The exhibit speaks for itself. Well, in this court view, the exhibit does not speak for itself. There's more than one black Chevy Suburban. The testimony elicited has to do with how this officer determined which black Chevy Suburban it was overruled. Because it's timing, and, and when she that, dropped please. her kid off at school. So we had previously located Jennifer Dulos' vehicle, so we knew exactly what it looked like. Right. And as we reviewed the video, when we found this, it matched up with the vehicle that we had previously impounded. Therefore, we knew it was her vehicle leaving her residence. Now, is this the same vehicle? I'm sorry. Is this the same vehicle that you had spent the preceding night standing by? Yes, it is. Hey, and Jenny. is there anything distinctive about that vehicle? The wheels matched up on it, and there are also stickers on both rear quarter panels, passenger and driver side. Uh, and those decals matched up with the ones that were on her vehicle that we had impounded. And is that what drew your attention to this, uh, I guess, segment? Yes. I got an exit from the same vicinity uh, that you could see in camera three was the same vicinity her driveway exit. And it's kind of cool how you see that drain there. And if you go down, I was actually looking around for all these different markers. And you go down here to uh, right here and you turn. Let me see. I think it was even this one. And you zoom in over here. Yeah, right there, there's the drain. See that? That same exact drain. So yeah, there's a tree right here and then the drain. So the tree would be from the camera's point of view on the left. And that's branches from the tree right there. There's the drain. It's Wells Lane. In addition, looking at the wheels. Well, thanks, Plato. I guess you were the only one that thought so. Hey, thanks, Scout dude. Thank you. No. Sir, did you uh, see that vehicle on those cameras again? Yes, we did. Uh, at approximately 8.05 a.m., it came back the opposite direction. Okay. Going to play states 3 cam 7 underscore 805 dash 805 Sir, if you can just direct your attention to the screen behind you again, please. And again, I'm going to pause it briefly. Uh, what does this depict? This is again camera seven, which is depicting the front of 54 Wells Lane and Wells Lane itself as it travels past the residence. And the timestamp? Uh, the date and the time, which again is 805 hours. And just to be clear, is this the same camera that we just saw on the other camera seven clip? Yes, it is. Okay. Definitely 
super chat worthy. And now it's going the other direction. So about seven minutes later, she's heading back home. See, it came from the other direction. If I can, I'm actually going to pause it and bring it back. <coughs> So now from the perspective of the house, we go up in the air again, it's like this. And the same and questions the, are it's coming this direction. Uh, identify this and she lives right as there. A, it's evidentiary value. So same objection overruled. So it just drove by like that. So the vehicle again matched the vehicle that we had previously impounded. Uh, the wheels matched up exactly, and so did the sticker that can be just seen on the left rear quarter there. Oh, and by the way, you can Can you see that sticker on the screen at this point? I believe I stopped it or paused it at twenty four seconds on the clip. Yes, I can. If you wouldn't mind, sir, could you that camera is right it? here. That's that the camera. Vehicle, right the There's the great There's a white sticker camera. The, the, gas the other camera is. And I, again, Cam. Oh, I'm sorry if I can't. Right there. Seats three Cam three underscore eight hundred five dash eight hundred six. Sorry to see it, but it's Please, right there. Uh, take a look behind you. That's the other one. I'm just going to stop it at 45 seconds. Sir, is that the same time, or is the time stamp the same? Yes, it is. And is this the camera Thanks, three? Scout and dude and camera Plato. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, after 8.05 uh, that morning, uh, did you continue to watch this camera, these cameras? Yes, we did. And did you see that vehicle appear at another time? Yes, I did, at approximately 10.25 a.m. Is that depicted on... Um, Camera three or camera seven? Should be depicted on both. Right. We can uh, states three cam three underscore one zero two five two one zero two five three zero. And I'm just going to pause it briefly, sir. Right. Again, the numbers on the top upper left hand corner. That is the date and time the video was recorded. And the time stamp, please. Uh, Ten forty five and six seconds. Thank you. <laughs> I'm actually going to stop that and play camps uh, states three cam seven underscore one zero two five two one zero two five three zero. And the same question, sir, is this the, the same camera seven that we have seen previously? Yes, it is. Okay, and the timestamp? That is the same at 10.25 in two seconds. Thank you. So that's it. Um, exiting, leaving again. But Jennifer's already dead at this point. See how it's leaving? It's almost like it's going back to school. It's kind of driving kind of fast, too. Did you notice that? And I'll stop it at 20 seconds, Your Honor. Uh, sir, how did you know that that was uh, of evidence or value to you? We were looking for anything depicting vehicle movement. Uh, of, of Jennifer's vehicle moving and the fact that that was leaving the residence again um, was of interest to us. Do you see that vehicle appear on those cameras again? We did not. I have nothing further, thank you. Cross examination. <coughs> uh, good afternoon, sir. My name is John Sharma. I represent Shelter Conus. I just have a few questions. Um, you're watching, how, how many hours of video did you watch yourself from the neighbor? Uh, in total, it was 48 hours, 24 hours from each camera three and camera seven. And did you see that starting when? Starting at midnight on the 24th of May. Did you see any other vehicles coming and going uh, that other than the uh, suburban that we just watched? Yes. Did you capture any of those pictures as being of any evidentiary value? We did not. Initially, we noted them, but as the investigation went forward, they were determined to be neighbors' vehicles or visiting vehicles that had nothing to do with the case itself. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned that um, there was something about the hubcaps on this particular, the wheel covers on this particular Suburban that um, were unique or, or stood out. Could you tell us what that was? I'm just curious. 
they weren't unique, but they matched up with the vehicle that we had already impounded. Do you know how many different styles of uh, hubcaps or wheel uh, covers there are for Chevy Suburban? Not offhand, I do not. So it was the sticker that you're referring to that we see in the back panel on some of the uh, some of the uh, video clips, right? That was a piece of it, yes. Without that, it would be like any other except Chevy Suburban from around that year, right? It's, it's feasible, yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. Nothing further. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> Your Honor, this is called Kelly Coughlin. Oh, come on, Scout, dude. Jeez. Anyways, thank you. I mean, yeah, that's... You could please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or solemnly and sincerely affirm, as the case may be, that the evidence you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Um, well, thank you, Scout, dude. Jeez. Uh, by the way, uh, what, what month are you going to start your walk? <laughs> are you training already? I don't think you want to start the walk without having some training going on prior. But man, the, the chat's just so dead and slow. That's why I got That's why I don't do these anymore. Like this stuff. Yeah, maybe April. So help you battle a penalty of perjury. I do. Thank you. Please state your name and spell it for the record. Kelly Coughlin. K E L L Y. Coughlin is C O U G H. L-I-N. And your affiliation? I always think it's a little weird when they're dressed up in their full riot gear, basically. Right, you know, right in the middle, you're, you're testifying. Like it adds credibility or something. Thank you. Keep your heads yeah, but why not watch and chat like you do on every other show? You know, when I'm doing other shows, I'm talking. Right? I mean, there's no difference. So it's like, uh, you know, communicate and... Police officer, town and Thank you. Good afternoon, officer. Oh, Coughlin. sweet. How are you? Good, how are you? Six mm -hmm. miles Good. is quite um, a bit. You work for the New Canaan Police Department? Yes. What is your current rank? Officer. Okay. How long have you worked for New Canaan PD? Eight years. Okay. Do you work in a particular division or department of New Canaan? I'm a patrol officer. Do you have a specific assignment? No, just general patrol. Is there any reason, ma'am, that you're dressed uh, with in... With respect to uh, being a uh, uh, New Canaan police officer, patrol officer, body you have specific training and experience as part of that? Yes. Can you briefly describe some of your training as a New Canaan police officer? I received six months of training at the Connecticut State Police Academy prior to working in New Canaan. Then we go through a field training program for approximately 10 weeks before being a certified officer on our own in general. And with respect to... Um, well, let me ask you this. Are you familiar with New Canaan Country Day School? Yes. In what way? I'm the school liaison officer there. And what does that mean? School liaison officer is a police officer. With right, but why wouldn't you just take it off when you're going to sit is down? Is a form of communication or a line of communication with the administration at the school? Of course. And somebody who visits That's... with staff and students <laughs> regularly. I don't know. Uh, with respect to how long have you been a liaison officer with New Canaan uh, Country Thanks, Day School? Tony Lee. Since 2018. What exactly is New, New Canaan Country Day School? It's a private school in New Canaan that has students from pre-K through ninth grade. How big is it? I'm not sure exactly. Is it one building or more than one? It's a campus with multiple buildings. Okay. Uh, if I can. Your Honor, states five, I believe there's no objection. If that's correct? That's correct. Thank states you. five, permitted as a full <laughs> Officer Coughlin, I'm going to draw your attention to the TV screen behind you, if I can. By the way, um, are you familiar with uh, the area around New Canaan Country Day School? Yes. And 
There's only one uh, photograph on. I mean, uh, like, so the thing is, of course, this is the kind of, I don't, I think she's wearing it because it makes her look more official and badass, you know, kind of. Because if you're, that's an unfortunate pause, let me. States. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, it's like, there's really no reason that you would have to wear, um, you know, you're sitting down, you're testifying, you don't need to have body armor on and all that kind of stuff, right? I think it just makes her look a little bit more, it was, it was, I think it's obviously something the prosecution's doing, you know, to bolster her credibility, right? Because maybe without that on, she looks a little bit more meek or something and just kind of. And that's just what they do all kinds of weird stuff like that in trials. Have you guys ever noticed that? I, I just can't think of a reason why you'd need to be wearing body armor when you're sitting down testifying for 30 minutes. Five, Your Honor, just for the record, uh, I'm going to show that here. Officer Coughlin, uh, do you recognize what's depicted on that screen? Yes. What is it? The campus of New Canaan Country School and the surrounding area. Okay, if you wouldn't mind, Your Honor, may I? Yeah, but why wouldn't you just take that part off? I get wearing your uniform, but she's wearing extra stuff. The body armor. The other officer wasn't wearing body armor, right? So I think there's just, it's something, you know, it doesn't mean anything. Like, it doesn't affect the facts in the case. It's just... Screen, would you, would you mind, please? Thank you. With respect to New Keenan Country School, uh, could you identify it on screen, please? Yes, here. Okay. Is it that hey, area? Hey, thanks, actually. How many buildings yeah. does it encompass? It encompasses the buildings up here, the fields to the side, and the buildings here up until Brock County. Okay, so now so they're... So what is the road on? I guess it is kind of going from top to bottom. I don't know if that's north or south. Perhaps you can describe that for me. This road here runs north and south through the and It's called... And so this is the... This is the... Uh, why it was great the way they portrayed those other surveillance uh, shots is because then they keep showing the suburban. See, this is what they're going to do in the Brian Koberger case with that surveillance footage. They're going to be able to show way more footage and link it all up. This one right here is showing Jennifer's vehicle driving the other camera, right? The one that was over here. Let me show you. So this, this camera right here showed the vehicle leaving on two different cameras at like 7.58, and then it shows back up at 8.05, right? But in between that time, it's gonna show that the Suburban, in fact, goes into the school over here. Therefore, circumstantially, dramatically increasing, except you're for a conspiracy nutter, that would say, no, how do you know that's her car? Did you see her? Did you see her in it, you bastard? And it's like, well, you don't really need to see it because she's the only one with that suburban in the cul-de-sac. And it went into the school, meaning she dropped her kids off right then. <laughs> you get it? I don't know, man. I need to see the person's face in there, you bastard. Okay. <whistles> wow. Bonus Ridge Road. And the road that kind of goes across the middle but up the side, what is that? This road goes east to west. It's Frogtown Road. Is, uh, man, you guys are just chatting up a storm, road. man. It's yes. just really fun. And could you uh, please uh, point that out as well? Wells Lane runs here. Okay. And uh, uh, particularly, do you know where 69 Wells Lane is? Yes. Could you please point that out? And for the record, point to the middle center right, I guess. Thank you. Um, now, are you at some point, you can have a seat now, thank you. At some point uh, in, I'm going to draw your attention to May 2019. Uh, at some point, did you review video surveillance from New Canaan Country Day School? Yes. And what was your assignment with respect to that? I was reviewing multiple sets of videos that came into the police department in reference to the investigation from different houses, schools, different locations. When you say investigation, what are we talking about? The missing person investigation for Jennifer Dulos. So was New Canaan Country Day School one of the videos that you were reviewing? Yes. During that time period? Okay. And it, was there, uh, did you find anything of evidentiary value on that video? Yes. Uh, what did you find? Jennifer's vehicle was on the New Canaan Country School campus on the morning that she was last seen of May 24th, 2019. Do you recall at what time? 8.03 a.m. And with respect to the, is that depicted on a camera footage, by the way? Yes. Where is that? By the way, did that make sense what I was telling you about the Suburban? 
because there wasn't one response to my comment about the Suburban um, and how they were able to show that it drove in there and then it increases the likelihood of it being the Suburban. But if you're a conspiracy nutter, then you're going to say that you couldn't see her in the car, so therefore you can't prove it's the Suburban because circumstantial evidence doesn't mean anything to these people. And yet when I made that comment, there wasn't even one, oh yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, I agree, agree yeah, nothing. All right, so we need a little bit more feedback in the chat. Thank you. Uh, well, let me just, uh, why don't I show you? I may have a moment, Your Honor, just yeah. this. State six, I believe there's no objection to it being a full exhibit, Your Honor. Is that correct? Yes. The video clips. No objection. Thank you. State six, and we'll be admitted as a full exhibit. <clears throat> Uh, it doesn't matter, Sandy. I'm just goofing around. I really, it's just, I hate when the chat's like this, though, when it's just dead as a doornail. It just shows you that it's not really, even though people say it's interesting, it's not, you know. When cases are really interesting, people are chatting and mentioning things. And for me, it's an interesting case because I covered it since the beginning. Um, if you I've read the probable cause. I know it. What's depicted you know, on that screen? Yes. But, okay. Um, uh, that's definitely a way that you can gauge if everybody's interested, right? If people are chatting, like, oh, wow, yeah, see, see what? And instead, it's just nothing. Like, there's zero uh, comments in, like, a five-minute period. There might be two comments. And see, that's when you know, right? Because when, when I'm covering the uh, Idaho 4 case and I'm talking about going into the house and moving around, like, this kind of thing, you guys all have something to say about it. Every second, you guys are saying, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what about this? What about this? What about this? Even though you're listening to this, you're only listening to me too, right? I'm showing stuff on the screen. And on this show, I'm showing stuff on the screen. So the only dedu deduction that I can have is that it's just not quite as interesting as some of those other cases to the masses. Going to play. Okay, so that one right there is right here. The camera's right on that building. Those are the stripes that it drove by right there. See? Boom. No street view in there. Officer Coughlin, was that the video that you identified? Yes. Clip of the video that you identified? Yes. Okay, if I can have one second and I'm going to pause it and ask you a question. No, she's just there showing there's the SUV and therefore it's the kids are being dropped off. I mean, obviously the kids went to school. And uh, Officer Coughlin, if you can go up to the screen again, and I know it's small, but in the upper left hand corner, there is some writing on the top. Can you see that? Upper left hand corner? Yes. What is that writing? And that didn't speed up the chat. 2019-0524, referring to the date of May 24th, 2019. <laughs> That's okay. Seconds AM. And North, JD video. Uh, with respect to the 803 time period, or I apologize, I'll strike that. With respect to the 803, uh, what did that mean? 803 was the time that this camera captured the vehicle crossing through Country School campus. Thank you. You can have a seat. Um, Officer Coughlin, had you on, let me ask you a question, on May 24th of 2019, did you respond at all to Lapham Road that night? No. Did you review or see in person the uh, Chevy Suburban that was found on Lapham Road? No. Okay, so when you reviewed the, this footage, how did you identify that vehicle? I viewed photographs of that vehicle, which were taken when it was recovered on Lapham Road and later processed. It is a great case. And did you utilize those photographs uh, in your review of the video surveillance? Yes. Now, All right. so the recap for anybody showing up right now is this. Basically, they, they found some Jennifer Dulos uh, went missing on May 24th when the cops got there. Uh, later in the evening, about seems like you know 7:50 or later, they came into the house. They saw some blood on the ground, but they thought, "Oh wow, they must have hit an animal." And uh, then they then they checked surveillance footage out later because they found her. Her suburban, suburban, uh, it was right over here on 
Laugham Road, right exactly where I have this pin right here. They found it there. So then they started checking, like, how did that vehicle get there? So they went back and reviewed Jennifer Dulos' uh, movements of her SUV, and at about 7.58 in the morning, this house right here has two surveillance cameras on it, and it drove by right here at 7.58, and it's seen on both cameras. Then at 8.05, and, and so they're showing right now how right after that, that same Suburban went into here, to the school where she was dropping off her kids. And then she um, comes back and then at 8.05, you see it drive by like this. That means it's heading home to here. Then at um, 10.25, it's seen driving away again. And it's that trip that eventually led her SUV or her Suburban to being right here. Okay, so that's what they're showing right now. There is missing time in this sequence, though. It's pretty, uh, we noticed this a long time ago, and that's why I think Jennifer Dulos' body is in this area here, not way up in this area where they think. All right, so back to the... Actually, I may have one moment. I just 2019. I may have a few more questions. I'm going to put back in states five and draw your attention back to the screen behind you again. Uh, just to close it up here, that video screen that we saw in states, I guess, six, uh, where was that? If you could, is the camera that that video came from depicted in that photograph? Yes. Could you please stand up and point to where that video or that angle it was? Here. What is that white building? That's the middle school on the campus of New Canaan Country School. Okay. And is that a one way, or if you can just describe it, please? The way in which Jennifer's vehicle was seen traveling out is a one-way exit out of the main portion of campus and goes Maybe use uh, Firefox, Sandy. What time Try does Firefox. Day school start in the morning? Typically between, there's different start times based on grade level, but typically eight, between 8.15 and 8.30. Is there a time for drop-off or that the school is open for drop-off of the children that go there? Typically between 7.45 and 8.30. Thank you. You can have a seat. Now, with respect to when you found or saw this vehicle on the uh, video, did you share that information with anybody? Yes. Who did you share that with? The other officers in the detective bureau who were working on the case. And who were they? There were numerous members from the New Canaan Police Department and the Connecticut State Police. Uh, I may just have one moment. I have nothing further. Thank you, Officer Uh They were married for 13 years. I just looked it up. Rough examination, please. Good afternoon, officer. Good afternoon. I just have a couple of questions for you. Um, was this particular camera that you just uh, showed us the video from a um, continuous running, or was it motion? Yeah, I didn't even see you yesterday, Timothy. What's going on, man? Continuous running. And how long a period of time did you watch? I don't recall the exact time frame, but it was a short period of time. Thank you. No redirected, Honor. Thank you. Thank you, officer. You mentioned it. Thank you. If I may, Your Honor, this case. Oh, if I may, I'm sorry, Officer Coughlin. <laughs> you don't have to move, but. I don't remember. Doesn't she have. Don't they have kids from other marriages or something, too? Something like that? I don't know if I'm remembering correctly. That was four years ago. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or solemnly and sincerely affirm, as the case may be, that the evidence you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God or upon penalty of perjury? I do. Please state your name and spell it for the record. First name's Corey, C-O-R-E-Y. Last name is Clabby, C-L-A. B as in boy, B as in boy, Y. Thank you. And your affiliation? I'm with the Connecticut State Police Major Crime Squad, Western District. Thank you. And the fact that you may be safe. Thanks. 
Detective Clavy, how are you? Very good, how are you? Good. Uh, you work for the Connecticut State Police? I do. Okay, how long have you been with the Connecticut State Police? Since uh, May 7th of 2010. And are, do you work for a particular well, who's the sixth one, division then? or department within the Connecticut State Police? Presently with the Western District Major Crime Squad out of Trip G in Bridgeport. Uh, if you could walk me through a little bit, you said Western District yeah, I didn't Major think Crime Squad. Uh, well, how many districts are there? So the state's broken up into three districts. There's Western, Central, and Eastern District. And with respect to Western District, uh, Major Crimes, what, I guess, troops would it be that cover, does it cover? Each district has uh, several troops within, and within each troop, there's a uh, group of Major Crime Detectives who work out of that troop. With uh, Western District Major Crimes, what towns do those troops cover? Well, that would depend on the troop coverage area. So for Troop G, we cover a massive area, mostly like Fairfield and Haven County. So we either cover those towns directly, or we cover like the state facilities, highways, so on and so forth. So it, it depends if there's a local PD. So for example, in this case, New Canaan, they may utilize us for assistance and we'll come out to assist them. But other than that, we just cover mostly like state facilities or jurisdictions. Where is Western District Major Crimes headquarters? What do you, what do you mean, Cindy? <laughs> Man, you guys always just are such buzzkills for the shows. When will they get to anything of sustenance? This whole thing is right here. Yeah, it lays the groundwork work down where the Suburban was, and then when it took off again, it 10-something. First, you have to prove it's Jennifer driving her vehicle, and they just did because he dropped off the kids. And then at 10.25, the car is leaving again. And then they find it abandoned on the side of the road there. It's in Litchfield. You cover Laugh and Fairfield down in New Haven. How do you get up to Litchfield? That's the headquarters. Basically, you would take Route 8, Route 25, and just keep going up well, to uh, Litchfield. That was a very bad question. I guess my, <laughs> my question is really, how is your headquarters in Litchfield if you're, you encompass a town area that is down at the Okay, place? so basically there's a command structure throughout the agency. So in the Western District, the headquarters, the command staff is located on a Litchfield. So the detectives themselves, we branch out to the local like troops. For me, Troop G, there we have detectives Troop A, Troop B, and Troop L. And troop A, B, L, and G. Yeah, not really. really. We're only at 169 right. people. Gets to, and you're a detective. Correct. Now we're at 157. Uh, is there also a, I guess, a crime scene unit? Yeah, so within each major crime squad, and there's three throughout each per district, there is a crime van, and they basically handle, like, scene evidence, video, photography of the scene, handling the evidence, maintaining the evidence, seizing the evidence, and so on. And that they, the van would fall under Western District Major Crimes, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so where were you in relation to Western District Major Crimes? If you could just explain the structure a little bit. So at the time of this incident, and still presently, I'm assigned to Troop G. So my office that I report to is in Bridgeport with Troop G. Is that in the crime scene van area, or is that so investigation? The van is located in Litchfield, okay. where the headquarters is for the district, and uh, they would respond from there. And it's kind of where they get their orders from. What are the other districts, I guess, that cover Connecticut? So the other districts would be Central District, which is basically the middle of the state. If you look at a map top to bottom, and then out east would be Eastern District, and they'd be on the other side of the state. So. And if, um, by the way, if I use the terminology van, what, what do I mean by that? Just so it's the prime van. So it's basically each district has a van. Within that van is equipment, and there's people that are assigned to that. There's several detectives, and their job and a sergeant is they operate within that van. Everything they do to process the crime scene is located within that van. How many vans and crime scene units are there in each district? I guess Western District, Central District, and Eastern District? There's one van, one van per district. Okay, so there's only three essential vans that cover the state police. Correct. For major crimes. Okay. Correct. Um, in May of 2019, uh, where were you? I was where I am now working in Trip G. And did you happen to respond uh, actually, before I go, go to that, can you just briefly explain to the jury a little bit about your training and experience as a state trooper? Okay, so we go to a uh, state police academy, which is in Meriden. It's a seven-month academy. It's uh, kind of fast and furious, physical. There's a lot of academics. There's a lot of uh, training on investigations, equipment you utilize, basically everything you utilize. Uh, crime investigation, motor vehicle investigation, tactics to kind of like de-escalate situations, basically everything you need to know to, to do the job. And uh, how did you get to a detective with major crimes? So that's a tested position that you have to apply for, interview for. You have to supply work that you've done, case work, whether it be search warrants, arrest warrants, and you go through an interview process, and it's a rank system. And if you rank and do well, and there's a position for you, you get the offer, you accept. So. In May of 2024, specifically, so I'm going to draw your attention to May 24th, 2019. Um, 
Did you have occasion to respond to 69 Wells that day? Yes. In what capacity? So Sergeant Bisson was controlling the van on that night. Uh, he called me and informed me that they were going to be going out to a scene in New Canaan at 69 Wells for the report of a missing person. Uh, it was believed to be a large residence, and he wanted some extra help to uh, handle the scene. At the time, I was considered an alternate on the van, so if they needed manpower, I would go with them and assist them in processing the scenes. So he asked for me to go, and I said yes. As a, I guess, alternate on the van, do you have to have any specific training or anything to have that position? It's the same training you have. You know, you're taught by the people you work with, and. And would you only be an alternate, I guess, if you were in that Western District major crime? Correct. Spot? Okay. Uh, with respect to uh, 69 Wells, uh, who was your sergeant that day? Uh, sergeant Benson was in charge of the van that day. Okay. And normally, who is your sergeant? Sergeant uh, Ken Ventresca. And that is out of the Troop D office? Out of the Troop D office. And that is, well, I'll withdraw that. Uh, when you arrived, uh, did you have a specific assignment? When I arrived, I was assigned by Sergeant Benson to uh, do the scene video. What is a scene video? So when, when we begin to process a scene, the first thing that happens every time is that we will go in and video the scene as is. So you can basically see a look of like what we walked into, what we saw, where things were, if things were just. Yeah, so there's this long, you know, like an hour long video here where they just walk around videotaping the crime scene or the house. So I don't know if you want to watch the whole thing or what. I mean, I might skip it around or something. Disturbed if there were not, if there was evidence somewhere, it's basically the, the general surroundings. So you're going to see it the first time as we saw it when we arrived. <clears throat> is there a certain process or procedure that occurs when you? Yes, let's, just, let's just get to the video. Here we go. So this must be later on when the state police got there with the. And there's that middle garage door open. I feel like they just would have waited till the sun came up, you know. Wouldn't that be make more sense to everybody? Like, you're already kind of late, so just, you know, put tape out, secure the scene, and then the next morning videotape it when there's light out. Because that's actually what it looked like when... See, I think Photos Dulos was right here behind the house right here as she pulled in. See this right here? I think he was standing right there. That's exactly my spot. It's been there for four years. See that? I think he was standing right there, and he knew she was coming. And she wouldn't be able to see him because if you look at the way the house is set up here, she drove up the drive. See right where I have that, that uh, red photos doulos symbol there? That's been sitting there since 2019, that, that image. All right, so when she drove in, he would just listen for the garage door to open and then he could just bolt around and get in behind the vehicle. That's what I think he did. And yes, if you're just showing up here, if you'd like to help support the channel, that'd be great. You know, try to get, uh, make it a good night instead of uh, just uh, barely getting to the gold night. Yeah, seems like why don't they just, why don't do the video in the morning though? Yeah, the next day, you know. It's pretty strange. I don't, I don't get this part. I mean, it's not like nefarious, it's just stupid. Film it in the daytime. Secure the area, film it the next day. I already made my mouse pointer big. But still, yeah, it does kind of still look small over there, for sure.
Now I can make, I'll try to make it bigger. That's still kind of small. Jeez. That's so weird. It, it, on the video, it keeps it small, but on my screen, it's massive. That's hilarious. Why is it doing that? It makes no sense at all. Yeah, you can see that little tiny yellow thing. Now, let me show you what it looks like for me. Ah, I guess that doesn't work. No. Huh. Well, my screen is huge. Yeah, maybe this, doing something like that would work, though. You know. No, but uh, I'm telling you, like, my mouse is taking up all of, I guess that's Jennifer, all of that picture's face. <laughs> but you, on your end, I'm looking over on the monitor over here, and it's tiny. Why would that be like that? Why, what would be, why would OBS Studios make it smaller? Everything else is exactly what you see on the middle screen, but the mouse is huge. Just crazy. Huh, there is something you have to. Man, that's absolutely bizarre. I mean, does this work if I move? Yeah, right there. You see that mouse that I that um, marker you see right there? That's how big it is for me on the same screen you're watching. Now watch when I let go of it. It's small. See that? And when I click right here, that little tiny mouse, that little tiny tiny one you see there isn't on the screen over here how weird is that so that um fuchsia pointer is how big it is on my screen see and right above at the tip of it it's how little tiny it is for you guys <laughs> that's just crazy i don't i have no idea why that would let me see let me let me i'll try to do a search on that let's see it's pretty weird Ah, OBS, incorrect cursor size and display capture. There you go. I've had set up OBS to record my screen. Primary to, okay, today I noticed that the capture video, the cursor shown is small. Let's see if somebody has an answer. This is not an issue, both images on the screen and canvas taken separately. Okay. I found the workaround in another post. In OBS Studio, display capture setting, turn off capture cursor. <coughs> ah, well, let's see that. <laughs> you know, you can always come up with something here. In OBS Studio, display capture setting. Well, why don't you show us where that is? Um, settings. Oh yeah, so maybe it's like output. <laughs> Display capture. Where, where is that? Oh, maybe no.
Okay, that's the one. Ah! Turn off capture cursor. Now does it work? Oh, no. <laughs> now you can't see it. What's force SDR mean? I don't know. Man, it's still tiny. I'm just trying to fix this on the fly while you guys are watching this mindless. Uh, but there, I see there. There is an issue there. Use the Windows magnifying magnifier. Press Control. Then zoom out all the way. Wow. That just sounds too. <laughs> if I turn that off. share the solution that worked for me without having to use magnifier with the properties of your display capture source change the capture method to Windows 10 when I left it as automatic or the other option I had the same problem reported here as soon as I changed Windows 10 my custom cursor displayed properly all right let's see does that work come on will that work Oh, and look at that. Can I get a boom? <laughs> you had to switch it over to Windows 10 in OBS Studio. There you go. All right, so here we go. Now look at this thing. Boom. <laughs> look at that mouse, man. That thing is huge. Woo. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to... I was, I was wondering, like when I was doing the yesterday... With the 3D model, I was just assuming you guys were seeing this big mouse. <laughs> but nope, nope, that's not it. It's right there. <laughs> There's the mouse. This is the size that I would normally have the mouse. Well, not that small, let's see. Would probably be something like, like this, right? And that's still bigger, right? You can see that. You know, I don't think it has to be that gigantic one. Maybe something like this, you know. <laughs> After all these years. Yeah, it was weird. What a stupid workaround, though. You have to use it uh, on your display capture in OBS Studio. Use Windows 10, not Windows 11. And if that isn't super chat worthy, you guys, what else is? Right, Jenny? Since that was for you. I said, how can they keep it clean? My aunt looked at me. Huh? Oh, I don't even know what you're saying. It almost makes me want to go back up to... Well, I guess in this case, th this is different here. This isn't a mouse in, in uh, this program. But you can all, I bet you can almost see that better too, you know? It's not as little... I think they do think he went into the kitchen and cleaned it, cleaned himself up a little bit. Day one of a million. I can see the mouse. Well, it's still kind of small on Google Earth for some reason. Well, thanks, Jenny. 
Yeah, you too, Cindy. I just want to move it around because it's so cool. I can see it over on the screen over here. What happens if I hit print screen now? Yeah, so you still can't see it. It disappears when you do that. Oh, wait. No, you can see it on OBS. It froze over there, but not over here. Interesting. One of a million, I can see the mouse. Chewbacca? Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. Thanks, Gray. Cindy is very happy to you all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I spend every time I do a show, I say, What will make Cindy happy today? And then I don't do that thing. This one just accidentally made her happy. You know, it wasn't like a, an intentional. Hey, listen, come, come. Now listen, I was walking down the street and uh, uh, yeah, okay, hey, listen. Now I'm gonna look inside this door here. Oh wow, look at that, there's a, there's a door. Can you see it? It's really spooky. Look at that. Oh my god. That's incredible. Maybe I'll just move it forward a little bit. Yeah, now they're in that weird place. I'm not sure what this is. Looks like it's a basement, but then you can walk right out onto the grass. So it might be a portion that it was on a hill. Um, I don't know, does that make sense? I bet it's on this side or something, underneath. It was me whispering. I was pretending because it's so quiet. And those are this is like real. I think they're the video doesn't seem to have audio, but it's in the back. The courtroom is so quiet. Clickety 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 click. You could probably just hear my stomach growl. or something. Hey, that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. Hey, hey, what about me? Can I go too? Hey, hey, can I go? Can I go with you guys? Hey, wait, what the? Is Mary Lou's there? She's in the damn courtroom right now? What in God's name is she doing there? Well, they invited me, Gray. Claudia Newbauer again. I'm sitting right next to her. Yeah, they got to admit that that's definitely somebody they're trying to look <coughs> like uh, Jackie Kennedy over there, Jackie O, right? I mean, there's no way in hell you weren't in that picture.
Alright, we're just going to move it around. There's nothing going on in this area. I think this is where it maybe gets more interesting in the garage. Thanks, Don. And that's D A W N. You all funny last couple of nights. Well, good. But it makes you laugh a little bit. <coughs> it's just so it sort of seems so random. I mean, that's blood there. It looks like smudge. All right. <laughs> You gotta get the footprint. I mean, though, that those first officers on the scene probably should have, when they noticed the footprint, maybe put, um, you know, a little yellow thing there, so somebody doesn't come in the next time and walk, step on it or something. Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. You old funny last couple of nights. Thank you. Smile. Uh, I'll beat you back if you want me to. Thank you, Jody William. Yeah, I make people laugh a lot of times. Pretty good though, look at it. 
Daryl always likes that horn sound. Now it's just so quiet. I was hoping some of you might be having a sip of coffee or, you know, something. <laughs> what are they going to zero in on the bloody fender? I don't know. greatest uh, cinematography I've ever seen. <coughs> we don't know what this is. These dots, if those are, you know, you can't see it very well. And if he zooms in, it kind of looks like blood, maybe. I mean, that'd be a lot of blood just missed by Dulos in there. Thank you, Ely. <coughs> Are you going to, uh, Crime, where were you guys going? Are you going to New Zealand? Sweet. Just for fun or like a trip of some sort? I only I landed there on the way to Australia, but we were only there for a few hours. Some amazing uh, trout fishing there, you know, fly fishing. It's crazy. <coughs> what do you mean not the same garage? What do you mean? What do you mean, not the same garage? That's your only comment. No, he killed himself in his own, where he was living at the time. That could have been blood. Georgina, who knows? It's the front of the car that has blood on it. It could be that she was trying to escape and get out of the garage. I wonder when they put luminol. Like, I bet there's a foot. They're gonna have something where they put luminol over this entire floor and it lit up like a Christmas tree. Like it was just all over the place. At least you'd hope they did that. Yeah, there's a smear right there for sure. I mean, look at that. And I bet you they test it. There'll be forensic experts that <coughs> test the blood, and that will be Jennifer's blood. And then you're going to have video of photos Dulos dumping items in a town with, you know, with Jennifer's blood on it. I mean, he, you know. The thing is, is it should only, it would be cool if it could just be uh, presumed that, yeah, he did all this. Now let's just prove that. Because what they're really doing here is sort of trying the photos Dulos case because she is sort of like implicated as being involved somehow.
I'm sending you something, Sozo. Yeah, I remember he, he had a house arrest for some unknown reason. I mean, they, he was dead to rights for murdering his wife, and he's, somehow he gets house arrest. Really? Pretty crazy that you could see through the the paint, Plato in that scenario. See, isn't this exactly where you just could just, if you had a really high caliber 360 degree camera, this would be amazing. I may, Your Honor, I believe it's uh, Detective Clabby, did that conclude the video? It does conclude the video. Thank you. I have nothing further, Your Honor, for Detective Clabby. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, can we um, approach for a moment, Your Honor? Uh, is the state intent to recall this witness? What was that weird I believe that Detective Clabby thing, will be called right? later, Your Honor. Well, then there's a housekeeping procedural matter that I would like to address. I need the jury to be excused for a moment. Well, perhaps we can just. How long will it take? About 48, about maybe 120 seconds. Do that at sidebar. Right. Your Honor, do you want a Detective Cloudy to step out as well? No. Court does not know the leader of the house. Yeah. I'm not going to request that you step out. In this. Okay. Thank just, you. No, can you hear this? Um, I, before the court uh, reconvened after lunch, I had uh, asked uh, Attorney Manning whether or not the witness may be recalled. She has indicated that certain other witnesses may be recalled, but for matters that were indirectly or, or shall I say, completely separate. Certain witnesses, such as uh, the detectives that were involved, not just now, but throughout the investigation, I might have more lengthy cross-examination. And um, I said I would then, if you're going to recall, I'm not going to object, but I'm going to uh, defer my cross-examination until then. The state indicated to me off the record they're going to object to that. So I think the matter needs to be resolved. And, and here's why. Several witnesses, including Detective Clavy, I may have some more extensive cross. I might even have things that uh, might be impeachment type evidence. I shouldn't have to do that piecemeal since confrontation and the right to cross examine is a constitutional right. So, in some cases, the state, I mean, the court has ordered that if there's going to be a witness, and if I object, then the state has to put that witness on for everything that it wants to uh, use, and then I only have to cross examine once. If I'm not objecting to their doing it in piecemeal where they're going to recall the witness two, three times maybe. I shouldn't have to do a cross and then wait and do another cross, maybe have to repeat the same kind of, of, of impeachment. It doesn't make sense. Plus, I submit that that's ineffective and um, I, I think it wastes judicial resources as well. If I'm going to cross, if I want to come back to this in a week or two when the witness comes back, 
if there are matters I want to address, it may actually relate to something that happens later. I shouldn't have to say I'm going to do this and be limited to that and then have the witness come back, and then I can't go back to that. So I'm going to ask the court either that the witness has to testify to everything if, I'm, if I don't want it, for, or uh, that the court will allow me to defer my cross-examination. They can move on to the next witness, and if I have information pertaining to this, it may relate to something that's going to happen later. I shouldn't be precluded just because the state doesn't uh, find that convenient. Well, of course, you admit it is easier to follow the state court than the cross-examination. It is easier to follow a cross-examination right after a direct examination for the jury's sake, for the fact finder's sake. The fact that certain cross-examination may be repeated should not sacrifice clarity for the jury. The court sees no problem with returning to any witness. If one witness is called and the direct examination is limited, then the cross-examination is limited to the scope of that direct. It's easy for the jury to follow. But if, for example, if Detective Clabby were to be or would return in a couple of weeks, and then the jury would have to reference what happened two weeks ago to understand the nature of the cross-examination two weeks from now. That is more difficult to follow. That may be, but that's on the defense. On the fact that the right to cross-examine is a constitutional right in the whether or not there's a, a sense of clarity, which to my knowledge is not in the, the um, rules or in the Constitution to the extent that what I might want to ask this witness is to, to, about what he did today is related to what's going to come in. I can't control the order of the state's witness. That's true. But I shouldn't have to sacrifice the right to confront and cross-examine for the sake of uh, expedience or clarity. And that's why I'm asking, I'm, what I'm asking and, uh, it right now is that I'm going to, I would defer my cross Till the witness returns, Your Honor will recall that this witness was involved in some of the other aspects of this based on the suppression hearings that we had. And I would rather do the cross-examination at once rather than breaking it up. And, you know, if I do it only once, if I've waived it, if the jury forgets as to what I'm talking about, again, that's on us. That's on the defense. But it, I shouldn't have to repeat or, for that matter, uh, break up my cross-examination for the sake of the state's convenience, which is what it sounds to me like we're doing here. To be honest, Judge, I've never, ever been in a situation, and, and I've been practicing now for 42 years almost, that, um, I, that I could not defer. If it's the same witness, you know, I'm the one then, if the jury forgets about the issue at that point, then I'm the one who loses that ability for the juror recall, but I shouldn't have to cross-examine on one point the state brings the witness back in a month or in two weeks and have to cross-examine on that point, and then maybe they bring him back a third point. I'm limited to that. I believe that as a, as a right to cross-examine, I should be able to do it once, if that's my choosing, that if I want to do it at once, and that's it, rather than break it. So the practical question is this. If the jury hears direct testimony today, and two weeks later hears the cross, and there's an objection based on the fact that the state may claim, well, this cross is beyond the scope of the direct two weeks from now, then the court would have to rule. And the court may not remember what was within the scope this day, such that it would overrule the state's objection. So in other words, if we're going to talk to Detective Calabin two weeks from now about this video, but the state is not asking about this video two weeks from now. The claim can be objection beyond the scope. The court would have to try to remember what was within the scope on this date. I will note, Your Honor, that one of the aspects of cross-examination tests memory. It tests bias, prejudice, et cetera, which is a fundamental right to cross-examination. I shouldn't have to do that more than once. I do it once. <laughs> Um, if I have to do it again, then that just, since the witness, unlike, uh, unlike when we're dealing with um, sequestration, it's the same witness. And for that same witness, for me to have to reinvent the wheel each time I submit is, you know, never mind that it's less, maybe it's less efficient, but it's, again, a fundamental right as opposed to a, uh, just a matter of convenience. 
My alternative then is to object to the recall of this witness. I should only have to cross-examine a state's witness once. Well, that, that's not a rule. You should only have to cross-examine a state's witness once. You can point to no authority for that. It's you wish to be heard? Uh, yes, Your Honor, just briefly. As a, there's multiple problems with this. The state has a right to present as our witnesses in our case as I see fit. Uh, by requiring us to indicate whether or not we're going to be recalling a witness for another particular issue, regardless if it's Detective Clabby or Officer Conflin, as I indicated before, actually puts the state in a position of making a decision prematurely. It is hindering the state's ability to perhaps pivot later in our case. And again, the same uh, concept of the idea that I don't have to disclose that. There's nothing to indicate I do. I do because it is a, it, I'm informing the court as well as the defense counsel that the witness is still under subpoena and the state has an intention to recall that individual. I may change my mind as the case goes on. It, the idea that counsel would prevent or stop his cross-examination uh, with respect to the subject that the witness has testified to uh, makes no, puts the state in a position of being forced to recall somebody that we may not see that we have to. Uh, counsel indicates uh, cases, and yet I would like to see what cases are legal authority that he is actually citing. Now, with respect to the, um, the witness today, Detective Clabby's testimony is extremely limited to this video. Counsel should be, if he has an opportunity to cross within the scope of his examination, this clear code of evidence, and it should be with, contained within the scope of the direct examination. If and when Detective Clabby comes back to testify, any cross-examination should be contained within that scope of examination. That is the way it is done. Otherwise, it causes confusion for the jury, confusion for all involved, and a waste of time. So the state would object if he wishes to cross Detective Clabby, he should do so now. Oh, I'll note, Your Honor, I don't have no authority that allows the state to call a witness a second or a third time after a cross-examination. Maybe then they can clarify uh, information that was exposed during cross-examination. So I would suggest they could point to any uh, authority that allowed them to do that as a matter of right. I would be shocked. But the bottom line, Your Honor, is I'm not requiring them to call Detective Cloud back. The question is, if they don't call him, then I've waived my right to cross-examine him unless I ask that he remain under subpoena and I'll call him in the case the defense case. So that's I, I see the, the prosecutor arguing two different things. I'm not requiring them to call the, the witness back just because they're reserving that right. The question is, I'm reserving the right to only have to cross-examine the witness once unless I believe it needs clarification at that moment. Thank you. Court. Can I state that there is a right to only one cross-examination of one witness? Court role is to conduct the proceeding in an orderly fair well, well, I don't even understand what he's saying. It's just ridiculous. Cannot undercut or Why does he want to limit himself? To I only want to cross him one time. For the jury and for the court. Direct examination, cross, limited to the scope of the direct. So the request to essentially defer a cross examination is not really a oh, I see. referral I see. at all. Cross he wants to cross-examine him in the future, you know, if, if he needs it, but he wants to save that because he doesn't want to do it now. <laughs> examination today is limited to the direct today. Right, it's cross -examination today. Cross-examination two weeks from now. Isn't cross-examination. May implicate what is said today, so that cross-examination can be directed to those issues that are still relevant on that day. So the court is only going to allow cross-examination limited to the scope of the direct. I, I asked the court to note my strong Oh, that's interesting. So, like, let's say the prosecution brings up a whole bunch of different points, and the cross is going to be, you know, you would cross-examine him, and you might bring up your own things, but if you wait longer, you know, that's sort of, then he's trying to get an advantage to hear all this other stuff to be able to grill him on a whole bunch of different shit. Uh, but the judge is saying, no, if you wait that long, you're only going to be able to cross-examine him based on the evidence that was on direct. So he's actually hamstringing himself if he waits, because now he can pretty much ask anything he wants, really. I mean, can he? I mean, it's, it's cross-examination. He can start asking all these different things. But he wants to wait till the future 
and then he thinks he should be able to ask whatever he wants but then at that point there's all this new information brought up etc uh yeah i don't know it's kind of seems like he's trying to ham he's going to hamstring himself by not cross-examining now where he could ask a bunch of different things he wanted to do it later where that he could even think of more things as more evidence is uh, produced thank you i just need a moment I don't know if I perceived that correctly, but that's what it seemed like. He said you'd be limited to the scope of direct if in a few weeks you cross-examine. And so that would be only the things brought up in direct. But I think just in general cross-examination, you can bring up other things that and, you and want I'm gonna to. While the jury is out, then I'm going to ask that the witness, uh, I'm going to ask some questions, but I'm going to ask that the witness remain under subpoena with the possibility that we would call the witness back in the defense case in order to uh, ensure his availability. If I may just be clear on one matter, Your Honor, he, the state has subpoena Detective Clabby with respect to the state's subpoena. The state, I do not want to be, and I've made this very clear um, multiple times, I am not going to be providing witnesses for the defense. He has the subpoena power. He can issue a subpoena today if he wishes, or the court can order clearly. But what I don't want to get into as the case goes on is because the state has issued a subpoena defense counsel requesting the state provide that witness. I do not want to get into that. Um, it, just to keep things very clear and clean, if Your Honor wishes to extend that today in court, I understand that. I just really have concerns about the state's subpoena applying to the defense no, case. This is, this is an easy matter. The court is not going to order a witness to appear for the defense under a state subpoena. The request is denied. Bring the jury back in. Just for the record, when I have one witness left for today, I, I am gonna. But just remember, Cindy said he was right. <laughs> I saw your. You thought he th was meaning something else, but I'm just the way you were just so adamant, man. You nailed it. Ten thousand times you've seen it. Asked that she be released. She'll come back tomorrow. Thank you, because we are planning to dismiss it for 45. Thank you. <coughs> the council stipulate for the presence of all of the jurors. Yes, yes. sir. As I understand your uh, testimony and was watching that video, sir, you started filming at, you said, uh, 4, 4 30 in the morning? It was 4 21 a.m., sir. And at the end of the video, it looked like it was 5 31 p.m., is that right? That's correct. So that wasn't a 13 hour video we just saw, was it? No, sir. So you filmed a little bit, <clears throat> turned it off, and then filmed something else, turned it off again? Correct. So what were you doing in the hours in between each second? I was assisting the Tiger Low Prior doing scene measurements, sketch maps, and then I assisted at the time Sergeant Davison with his efforts at the scene. All right. So you mentioned two individuals. I just want to be clear. One was La Fiore. Correct. And he was at the time a trooper. He, I'm not sure if he's rank at the time, sir. At some point, he became a detective, right? Correct. But wasn't he in transition about that time from being a trooper to maybe joining the the major crime squad? I would refer you to him. I'm not sure of. His path through the state police. Fair enough. And who was the other individual that was there? At the time, his rank was Sergeant Davidson. Davidson? Correct. And I noticed at one point when you're filming the side of the Range Rover, we see in a reflection a cameraman or a camera person. That's you, correct? Correct. And then you see two individuals walking behind you in that same reflection, correct? Correct. Was that uh, one of those people, uh, Trooper or Detective LaPiore? I don't know who they were. Well, how many, wait, what about uh, Sergeant Davidson? Was one of those two people in the reflection Sergeant Davidson? He was not on scene at that time. So who were all the other people that were on scene <coughs> while you are various in various rooms filming? That would be other members of the unit who were assigned to the van. Yeah. See, uh, in all reality, all this stuff here, he's trying to cast doubt on the blood spatter in the... Um, garage and things like that that's probably what he's, where he's going here like wow you just didn't do it quite right 
But it, it just doesn't matter because Photos Dulos is caught on camera throwing away garbage in the drains that had uh, Jennifer's blood on it and a license plate that he changed he put in there. So it's like all this stuff is just sort of, yeah, yeah, okay. And so that means that circumstantially the jury is going to realize that, yes, um, Photos Dulos attacked Jennifer in the garage. His and, 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 and guess what, everybody? In a little bit, maybe, maybe tomorrow, the next day, I don't really know. But they're going to show Photos' Dulo, Photos Dulos' um, foreman's red pickup truck that he used and parked right where Jennifer's Suburban was found. And apparently there was a bike in there, too, that he may have used. So tell us how many people were in there at that time. At the time, I would say at that one moment where you see the reflection, there's a total of three people. And how about during the course of your filming? From That's not a spoiler. We already talked about it in the probable that. cause, Cindy. The majority Don't of you time remember? Myself, or did you miss the, that? The only time I would be with other individuals is if I requested another light. As you can see, I'm using another light to illuminate the room so you can visualize what I'm trying to record. <laughs> and at times, either a battery would die and I would request another piece of equipment or oh, another yeah. individual who works within the unit who's on scene would assist in providing light. Well, my question had been, who else was in there during the course of your filming? And I haven't really heard you tell me. The exact individuals that were in there with me at that time, I don't recall exactly whom. How many? As I stated, three, sir. A total of three others the whole day. At that one time that you requested is a total of three. I asked between 4.21 a.m. and the end of that film, how many other detectives were inside the hall? The exact number, I, I cannot tell you. I would refer you to the notes of whoever else did reports. There was a handful of us there doing certain things, such as scene. Two people will do photographs. A person will do video. A person will do sketch. We have a supervisor on the scene. And we have another person doing evidence. So, so if I subtract you as the person doing the video, we're talking about at least six other people. At least, right? Possibly. Were you made aware before you started filming that there had been uniformed police officers that had walked through that? I was aware that there was a response to the scene. Oh, wow. Holy had. crap, then. Were you aware that officer... It must not really be Jennifer's blood at this point. Picked up items to look at. I'm, aware of that. I'm not aware of that. Wowzer, man. Told you that, right? I'm not aware of it. Were there any New Canaan police officers or detectives on the scene while you were filming? Well, uh, any of them on the scene would have been down in the cul-de-sac. So no one was in the house while you were filming? Not when I was in the house, correct. Okay. Were you aware that... Um, Civilians, for want of a better term, had already been through that garage that day. At the time of filming the video, I was not aware if that was a possibility. Were you aware that at least the babysitter had been in there? At the time of filming, no. Were you aware that at least one of the children had been in the house? Objection. We could get a time frame. Between the, okay, that's fair enough. Between the time that the report of a of missing person came in, and the time of your filming, were you aware that at least one of the children had been in that house? I would not be aware of it. Were you aware that at least one detective from the McCain police had already gone? And what does that have to? Aware. What does that were mean? That a um, cleaning person or a housekeeper had been in through the garage. I would have. So she cleaned the garage yeah, with a bloody she, rag. The time of the, of the report of the person being missing withdrawn. How come that doesn't I, make I any sense? Now realize why the objection is. Correct. Between the How would the maid clean the garage floor with something bloody? Time that the, the last time that uh, Jennifer Lewis was seen in her vehicle and the time of the your beginning the video, you aware that the uh, housekeeper cleaning person had been in that garage? At the time of filming, I would have no way to have that information. I have no further questions at this time. Is there a redirect examination? Not at this time, thank you. Detective, you may step down. Thank you, sir. As I indicated, Your Honor, I have uh, another witness. Direct was, you know, when you come back, or I mean, because it, it was sort of it's sort of interesting now that I think about this whole thing, like how that works. And then later you can bring him back up, but it's really narrow at that point because you only can bring them up to sort of answer a question that is, you know, something that got brought up later. So then it's really narrow later. So it sounds like if he doesn't do it now, 
then he has to wait till later but then it's narrow based on what the uh, prosecutor said or asked I guess anyways what this, the court will ask this is it do because there will be a great deal of media coverage you will discover what asks you to avoid all of that media coverage please do not talk to anyone about the case not even each other we hope to see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. And for this evening, you are dismissed. That's how loud it could have been. <laughs> All right, well, that's it, you guys. That's the uh, the full thing. <laughs> Day one. Well, I mean, maybe I'll try to do something maybe tomorrow, like um, at noon my time or something. And, you know, that just sucks because I want to make a video too because the videos are what really help my channel out, not the the live streams. I mean, the uh, super chats outweigh the ad revenue, but I get, you know, sometimes when I make a video, I get uh, 80 to 100 subs from it. I don't get any on the live streams because, as you can see, look how many people watch it. And we only get like maybe 2,000 total views, and they're usually the regulars. That's 7-Eleven here. Speaking of 7-Eleven, I want to have a Slurpee. Yeah, but man, just uh, we so uh, I appreciate everybody who supported the channel tonight. It really helps support what I do here, and um, you know now we're almost halfway through the month again, and we'll be starting our next year of helping and supporting other uh, charities and DNA fund and our scholarship and right now I have four people on the scholarship review board where they re review the various applications and and yeah it should be pretty uh, interesting they get to pick some people got to pick two people each one three thousand and it's your support that allows me to be able to do that at the end of each month and year all right so if you're out there and you want to become a channel member that helps to the super chats channel memberships ad revenue etc all go towards the channel income and i try to uh, give away quite a bit of it as you guys have seen over the years but without your support i can't do the show nor can i do the give away that much <laughs> i mean there's just no chance all right Thank you, Claudia Neubauer. And so we uh, we didn't make the goal other than the fact that Scouting Dude sent that in, so I'm still a little bit leery. Uh, we'll see how it goes tomorrow uh, doing the, the trial live stream because it takes up one of my notifications. And, I, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. You know, today's notification went out at, uh, what time was it? 3.30, let's just say 4 o'clock. Let's say tomorrow I do a show at, uh, let's say I put a video out in the morning. Now well, that's 2. And then let's say after that, then uh, I do a live stream doing this at noon. Well, that's 3, right? And then uh, I think that's why people started second channels, I just realized. So anyways. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Jim Lawn, Sandy Shirley, Kathleen Cannett, Claudia Neubauer, K. Me, Kubi. These walls have eyes. Danielle, Claudia Neubauer, Scouting Dude, Kubi. Scouting Dude made up uh, almost half of the entire thing. And then Kubi, and then Michelle, Wise Child, Alley Cat, Claudia Neubauer, Kendra B., uh, Pauline Mary, Jean Darcy. Uh, Danny, I-C-U-R-N, Plato, Scoutin' Dude, and then Scoutin' Dude again, that's the double cat eye. And then Tawny Lee, and Axie N, Kubi, uh, Jenny, uh, I think it was Hotcomb, Don, Jody William, Eel Lee, and Claudia Neubauer. And Claudia Neubauer made up a huge chunk of the rest, too. So other than that, it was, you know, there's a lot of support out there, but... Um, we, we made the goal, so there you go. 
Yep. So, what to do now? What to do now? Tomorrow's going to be really shitty weather here in Portland. It's going to be really cold. So, we'll have to uh, see what uh, what happens. Okay. So, anyways, thank you all for being here. And let's see if Blue and Chloe... Oh, that was the one from way earlier. That light in the on the wall there works so perfectly for this whole area. <laughs> look at Chloe right there. Oh, look at that. And blue. It's pretty amazing. Yep. Okay, everybody. Thank you for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time. Be safe out there. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five, and a six. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector, flag rejecter. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector. Is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector, and I'm always gonna be a pup protector, fool deflector, interceptor, and I'm mean a little speckle speck with a vector on his pector. With all respect, y'all, just remember I've a temple for conjecture. I have no agenda, I'm no pretender, and I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. Talk to you. All right, everybody. Have a great evening. You too, Mary Lou. Thanks, Gray. <laughs> All right, see you guys.